All right, guys, welcome back to the Hunter Base Podcast. What do Maverick Hunters do when they're not hunting Mavericks? Go back to the base, recharge, and shoot the shit. I'm your host of the most, Zero Master, and I'm here with the co-host, who's most verbose, Nanny Jutsu. Oh, yes. I thought, I I'd, I thought I'd try something new. Am I verbose? I've never... I've never well, really I mean, you're, that you, you, you talk a lot, and you're an English major, and you use big, fancy words, so I feel like that's ah, verbose. Okay. Is that, do, am I using that word right? Yeah, you're using it. You know, just give us a little. In, like just give the, us a little intro. A little extra. A little extra. I say I'm the host of the most because I'm a thick boy. So, okay, there's a lot well, of me. Is, but there, there's so much that you can you can give to the world. So <laughs> is that what you mean by most? Uh, yes, <laughs> I guess. All right. All right. So uh, yeah, no, I get, I get you. I hear, I hear the, the church bells ringing. So, anyways, guys, uh, we are back for part two of E3. Uh, it only has been a month. It's only been a month, <laughs> uh, scheduling and other things, and I did that interview. But yeah. but but this is a momentous going occasion. up in, going up in the world. This this uh, this here is zero master. Yeah, if you haven't checked out that podcast, you should definitely check. It, it out. Actually, Even though I wasn't in it. It <laughs> it and the let's play videos I did are doing very well right now. So that's good. It's good. It's good to hear. We're getting a lot of comments of people being like, "Man, you should have had somebody who knew something about football playing with you." I'm like, I know something about football. It's just been a while. <laughs> Technically, the person you're playing with, he knows about football, yeah. right? <laughs> the guy making the game. Yeah, I think they were. I think they were talking about me because I kept saying I haven't played football in a while. Oh, yeah, it had no. been a Canadian well, football is a complete mystery to me. It, it's it's three downs, eleven players. That's the main thing you need to know. All right, less players, less downs. But volleyball, on the other hand, fucking I know a lot about. Yeah, volleyball. we know all. You know all about volleyball. We know. I actually, you know, I was in volleyball in high school. Like I actually was. in Oh, you did. Team so it's not yeah. just. It's not it's just not sexy just, video games. It's not just sexy beach beach volleyball. <laughs> sexy beach. God damn it! Sexy beach three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that reminds me of when fucking Kajeta Kun said he jizzed on his PSP. But let's not get into that. <laughs> um, so we left off Who? last time with Microsoft, and CJ's been waiting, guys. He's been waiting <sighs> to talk I've about Bethesda. So, so we'll we'll get a lot of the stuff about Bethesda out of the way first before I go. I go into a semi deep dive into my feelings of a certain game. Yeah. Um. So Rage Two. Let's start off with Rage Two. I don't know how to feel about it just because i didn't play the first one all i heard about was that kevin kept saying that the ending to rage one was bad and that he didn't see us equal but yeah but i mean a lot like i i feel like sometimes that those games if they're uh, as i remove mass effect 3 from that generalization that as long as the journey to the end is okay i the ending can be bad and the game could still be good mm -hmm. um like, for example, uh, I played Far Cry 5 recently. I really enjoyed the gameplay of 5. I liked the jankiness. I kind of liked, you know, regular weird Ubisoft physics yeah. in and of it. But the story, like the ending story, was awful. Yeah. But it didn't ruin the experience mm -hmm. for me. So yeah. this is the thing is, like, I didn't play Rage. Um, My friend, uh, or old friend Vaughn, uh, Mexican... Uh, he he loved it. He played it a lot on stream oh, yeah? back in the day, and I watched I watched quite a bit of it. And it always had like such an interesting sort of system. Like yeah. it's a first person game, yeah. and it looks like they they're fully embracing the Mad Max in this one. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Because it used to be sort of post apocalypse Mad Max E, but it felt more more like really post-apocalyptic like mm -hmm. people haven't gone crazy it's just like no they're just like scraping by yeah exactly and i mean i i mean the whole uh, just another one to add to the post-apocalyptic uh yeah, fucking list <laughs> from this e3 yeah no we got we got a lot going post-apocalyptic pirates <laughs> i'm trying to remember <laughs> what the other one was um but uh it was a it's the new zombie it's the new zombie right yeah now. pretty much yeah but yeah. um I mean, it looks fun if you like the first a, one. I probably, I'm going to be honest, I'm probably not going to play it. Um, I'm, I'm not going to either. But, uh, I'll probably watch, i probably watch, like, if Unreal is going to pick it up, I'll, I'll oh, just yeah, watch if, it. Oh, yeah, if Unreal picks it up, I'll, I'll watch, watch him stream him it. Because this that might be a fun game to watch. See, he's so good at, like, those shooter games that I'm just like, I love watching him play them because I know that he's going to talk about something that I've never thought about, and or, like, I know he's going to be good at it, so I don't have to yeah. worry about 
you know, someone like me, who's fucking terrible trying to play <laughs> fucking Doom 2017. Speaking of which, Doom Eternal. Yeah. We, Doom it's, Eternal. It's, a, it's a logo. It's a sequel. Yeah. Getting a sequel. Thank. Actually, I'm really pretty excited. And uh, since of this recording, like, it will be, we're going to find out a hell of a lot more at QuakeCon in yeah. August. So mm -hmm. uh, we don't, we don't have to wait too much longer to see it, sort of see what they're going on. Mm -hmm. But one big thing that I'm hoping for, because the single player was so good, but the multiplayer was ass. That's what I've heard. So really, 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 really hope that they, they, they pull up their britches, and then we get, like, an Unreal Tournament-style Doom, like, awesome multiplayer this time around. Well, and hopefully, crossing our fingers, they've they've been saying that that's what they're going to be trying well, to do. Well, it's id. Don't they own, like, a... What is it? Do they make Quake, or do they make Unreal? They make Quake. They make Quake, yeah. so they should know how to make a good multiplayer. Yeah, but, like, the... I, I think it was one of those things with Doom... That they they tried to make it a little too arcadey. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, rather than like very like deathmatchy, where it's like oh, different gear and like different yeah. colored pieces. It was real. It was a mess. Of now, a, of I, a I thing. will I will say, um, I really like the new Doom because I started streaming it. Um, I mean, sorry, Doom twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen, whatever year it is. Um, yeah, and I really like it. <clears throat> I just hope that like. One thing, one criticism I have from it so far is that I find it's really easy to get lost. Maybe it's just me, but I find it's yeah. easy to well, get see, lost. Well, see, that's so. the thing about, that's the one thing that a lot of people liked about Doom is it, it didn't have, A, a lot of hand-holding, and it reminded people of the old Doom games. Like, if you go back mm -hmm. and play, like, a Duke Nukem 3D or or <laughs> Doom or even Quake or Unreal, they just, like, show you this gigantic open world and they're just, like figure out what the fuck you're supposed oh, to do now i mean i mean <laughs> i'm not that's how it yeah, is yeah i'm not i'm not asking for the game to hold my hand but like and i understand why they did that but it's also you know this is a different generation of gaming so like yeah y it doesn't always work the exact same as it did back in the old days so i just would like like one thing i would like is like a, a way that i could mark the map i don't know if you can actually do that in, I don't. I don't remember off the top. Yeah, of my head, if they man. can just add the ability to mark the map, like kind of like an old dungeon crawler RPG, so I can mark yeah. things I've done on the map, that'll be easier because most of my time getting lost is going back and trying to find things I missed or things I oh man didn't. My die. original playthrough of Unreal, like the original Unreal, mm -hmm. I had actually created and drew out maps mm -hmm. to keep myself from getting completely lost. Because the, the places were either incredibly big or all the hallways look very, very similar. Mm -hmm. So in certain areas in Unreal, you just had to, you just had to like draw it out or you just have to remember it. But it's I wasn't a, very much of a visual, a visual learner. So just, just marking the map is like a modern feature that I think the game would do well mm -hmm. with because then I can, I mean, it's nice because you can see the things you discovered that you've actually gotten, but like. Just a way to, for me to mark the map, just like with an icon or something, so I can know where I've been. That'd be nice. Oh well, we'll we'll find out more in August. I yeah. Guess. So um, moving on to the next topic, I mean, this is another game that both me and you haven't really played. I've played the first Prey, like when it came out on the 360 back in like 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. But this has nothing to do with that anymore. It's sort of like a soft reboot of the series. So it's getting some DLC. Yeah. Uh, Typhoon Hunter or Moon Crash is the one that yeah, came out. Crash that got shadow yeah, dropped. But... Yeah, okay, so there's actually there's more there's <clears> more <throat> DLCs. There's a couple of them. Um, mimics and aliens, you know, regular regular prey stuff, I guess. Staring at your eyeball in the mirror. I feel like I feel like we're we're not the people to really talk too too much about this. It's just another shooter. Yeah. Which is interesting because, like, I've always been, and this is just something that I've noticed with Bethesda recently, is they were always big on large-scale RPG sort of adventures. And, I don't know, it's scaled back, and I guess it's just because they've acquired uh, publishing rights and other things like that over the years, right? That they've got a lot of shooter games now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, with because, <laughs> like... Doesn't does Bethesda own id or is it just like a second party developer for them? Or? 
I know I'm fairly sure they they own a, a percentage of it. I don't know if they own like yeah. a huge majority of it, mm-hmm. but I'm fairly sure that they were they were acquired by Bethesda yeah. a while ago. But speaking of it, another game from one of their franchises, uh, they teased Wolfenstein Youngblood. Yeah. Uh, with uh, B.J. Blazkowicz's daughters. His yeah, because he at the end he he has he has, uh, he has twins. Oh twins no! Twins. Spoiler! I don't care. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm gonna get the Wolfenstein games. I think I'm probably gonna get them for Switch now. But yeah, since podcast, I own a Switch now. By the way, <laughs> I just bought it. Yeah, you just bought it. You just got it today. <laughs> oh yeah, happy but, birthday uh, to me. The the biggest thing about the Wolfenstein games is they they hard rebooted them, mm-hmm. um, and sort of modernized them quite a lot. And if you want. If you want like doom level of like action excitement, but a more linear sort of straightforward type where it's not like there's not a lot of verticality. It's just like, here's a room of guys, kill the Nazis, murder the Nazis, you know, like do what needs to be done. Uh, This game is super fun. It's super fast. It's very arcadey. And uh, both of them have like they have that perfect cheesy american bravado storyline with a with a lot of like you know tongue-in-cheek sort of like what what would really happen if like a fascist government were to take over in a republic state Mm -hmm. sort of deal it's it was very interesting i didn't play uh the second one but the first one was so much fun so much fun and i i kind of i kind of kicking myself that i never picked up the second one maybe uh, when Steam does another sale and it's like ten dollars, I'll pick it up for my PC or something like that, just to sort of play it. Um, um and th- I think it's interesting. Like this is like the third or fourth time Wolfenstein's got a reboot. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's funny. Um, well, like this this is what I'm saying. This is the hard reboot. The mm-hmm. other ones were sort of like semi soft reboots where yeah. they tried to make them like take place in the same universe as those DOS games yeah, that it, really had no plot other than here's Hitler, but he's in a mech suit. Yeah, because, like, you know, I think it's funny because, like, like Wolfenstein 3D is also a remake of the original Castle Wolfenstein game. It's, it's funny yeah. to think about. <laughs> like, if you actually look at the history, how many friggin' times they've remade the first game, which is funny. Um, so... <laughs> I know you've had a lot to say about this next yeah. one. This is why I'm saying we should skip it. We so skip we're going to skip it for now. And uh, uh, one that I actually have a lot of positive things to say about, Elder Scrolls Blades. Um, it's, uh, it's a mobile game, but it's almost like a full Elder Scrolls game. Um, it is, the battles are limited to only like one to two enemies at a time, but I mean, it's a mobile game. So all the mobile RPGs that I played, like doom 2 rpg and stuff are like that so yeah i mean but the fact that like there's a world that you can explore on a fucking phone game that looks <laughs> uh, that sounds amazing to me of course i don't know how stripped down it's going to be we've only seen a few like trailers uh, teaser stuff mm-hmm. um but i you know i'm i'm signing up for the beta on this one i want to try it out yeah i want to try it out too um i'm a little apprehensive on the idea that that yeah, it looks like it's gonna be big, and free, and open to play. But there's always that sneaky, sneaky money thing that always crawls into these types of things. I the one thing I hate about action adventure style games on mobile devices is they only allow you to like explore for a certain amount of time. Like I don't like this is I'm only this is a lot of presumptuous. Uh, talk when it comes to this because we haven't seen a lot of it but uh, in other ones they usually have a fatigue system right so mm-hmm. you go into a dungeon and your character has a certain amount of stamina or we'll call it and when you run out of stamina you have to put the game down and then you have to let it recharge or you could buy premium stamina potions yeah and then you could do it and i don't like that especially when it comes to dungeon crawling and stuff like that i don't want to be like halfway through the dungeon like oh well got to put my phone down like it will be good in a sense that you can just sort of do it for 20 minutes and then you know throw away and like i said i i'm a sucker for rhythm games like mm-hmm. that but they're not designed like 
something you're supposed to sit down and play for like half an hour to an hour or longer in this <laughs> case, right? I'm not saying that this is going to be like that, but other games that look like this do that. Mm -hmm. So it's very, I'm very worried that that's where the, that's where the gotcha, the gotcha stuff is. Mm -hmm. That is a concern um, for me too, that they're going to just throw microtransactions in it, but I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. A, also, you can play it in one handed. It's going to be a portrait mode game. Yeah. So you can play it so, while you're supposed to be studying in class. Yeah. Or doing other nefarious things with your hand, like eating a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> nefarious things like eating a sandwich. Oh, mm -hmm. God. One I, sec. I'm sorry. The person that is able to look at their phone and then systematically able to direct a sandwich directly into their mouth without smudging mustard and mayonnaise, they aren't human. <laughs> They're just. They're robots or androids. Yeah, or something. exactly. Of course they are. I mean, you can't do both. <laughs> but that's, that's the thing. Uh, this is a, sort of a running theme in Bethesda's thing. Like, towards the tail end, it was a lot of, look at these things that we have nothing to show you for. They're, they're um, very big it. on, look at this text logo. <laughs> yeah, so the, probably the biggest thing is there's a new next generation... Starfield game, which is a new IP, I think? Yeah, uh, or as Billy likes to call it, uh, Space Fallout. Yeah, it's probably gonna be Space Fallout, which is, is fine. If you want Space Fallout, uh, there is a game on Steam which is super, super fun and relaxing if you like cleaning things. <laughs> uh, let me let me see. It's the uh, uh, Vicera's Cleanup Detail. Have I, have I ever told you about this game? Is that that game where you have to, like, uh, clean up after some, uh, like, a uh... Like, yeah, like a bio biohazard has broken out of a space lab, and you're the janitor that has to go and clean up all the. Oh, I'm thinking about the one, the FPS where you're the janitor who has to clean up after like a, like a Doom esque first person shooter game. Oh well, yeah, that it that, that's what it kind of looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, that, but that's that's the basically the plot. It's like you're the guy that comes and cleans up after Doom or Quake or other things happen. You know when the. Mm -hmm. the 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 space marine has gone through and murdered everything in the space station. However, he's left it looking in all types of disarray, and it's 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 strangely therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check that uh, out. Then that's what I I like to call Fallout Fallout Space personally. Another but yeah, it's there's not very much about this other than yeah, look a, we, a, a we got a space RPG coming. Speaking of another logo. <sighs> Elder Scrolls so 6. I'm, I'm so excited, and it's going to not be an MMO. I was so worried when Elder Scrolls... I'm not saying that Elder Scrolls Online isn't a good game. It's just I felt that it was going to go the path of Warcraft, mm. where I loved those RTSs when I was a kid, more so than I like StarCraft. And to see Warcraft just be turned into an MMO was the saddest thing for me and i thought oh well maybe warcraft 4 will come out because i was like we need to finish off what the story started in, or ended with in uh the frozen throne mm -hmm. in the first or the last expansion for uh warcraft 3 mm -hmm. and then they made dethroning arthas uh, a fucking expansion in in world of warcraft and it made me so sad it made me so sad so I'm so glad that Bethesda is like, no, no, this is not like we're making another MMO or anything like that. This mm -hmm. is a true sequel, just like Skyrim, right? So, yeah. So it's that's pretty pretty cool. We don't know what the the um, the subtitle is yet. Um, but since since the uh, the expansion has gone into Somerset, we may not get Somerset. Yeah. Uh, um. Which is kind of sad because I'd really like to go. Actually, they, we could go to the the deserts with the the Khajiit and stuff like that, or Black Marsh. Black Marsh. You, you think really you think cool. six is not going to be Elder Scroll Six Somerset? No, no, it's not going to happen because the game the game is whatever or <laughs> Summerside Isle or whatever it's fucking called. I can't remember his name. Um, but Black Marsh would be cool going into the Black Marsh where the Argonians live. Yeah, probably really cool. But that's all we that's all we have. Yeah. So, so, um, Elder Scrolls Legends is coming to Switch, Xbox One, and PS4. Yeah, woohoo! Card games, card games on consoles. 
um, and not motorcycles. We kind of just mentioned the expansion, the Somerset expansion yes. for Elder Scrolls. Is is it out before yeah. E3 or? Oh yeah, it it came out. It was in beta during E3, mm. and I think it's finally like out out. It's either that or it came out just before E3 happened. Mm. Um, they showed a little bit more of uh, Quick Champions, and I snagged it while it was free during E3, so I have it. I'm going to play it at some point when I'm, I can get a better graphics card for my computer. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, my, that's one of the next things on my list of things I need to upgrade in my setup. So uh, the Switch was number one. I, I had to get a Switch, but <laughs> graphics card is probably next. Um, yeah. But yeah, they ju they just showed off some more gameplay and some more of the hero stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's I I like what they're doing with Quake Champions. It's uh, I don't have I really have no real opinion on it. I it's just it, I, it is another hero shooter, but it's Quake. That's the thing that's interesting about it because Quake yeah. is was I'm pretty sure Quake was the original hero shooter, I think, or, or not Quake. Uh, no, sorry, that was, I'm thinking of Unreal Tournament. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm fairly sure Unreal Tournament was, really. But Quake uh, was like was a big deathmatch game back in the day, so it had becoming a hero shooter is just kind of a natural progression. Um, yeah. The game Blondie Can't Stop Playing, Fall Shelter, has come to PS4 <laughs> and Switch. Well, it's out now. Yeah. All of them are out. Mm -hmm. um, um, even, and it's free. It is free. Play. Yeah, I might, uh, I might pick it up for Switch then. Get another game from yeah. my Switch. <laughs> Um, and then I guess the only other thing worth of note, uh, was that Prey and Wolfenstein are getting VR versions. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yay. but there's, it's one of those things where it's like probably very basic VR. It's not going to be like crazy. Uh, it, I mean, it could just be the games just with VR versions, sort of like what they did with Doom. Okay. With VRF or whatever it's called. Okay. We have to talk about the biggest announcement. For Bethesda, <laughs> Skyrim, yeah. very special edition, very special edition, which is a thing on Alexa, and it pretty much is just playing D and D by yourself. Yeah, it, but it's in the Skyrim universe. So, yes, the, the trailer they did with uh, I don't know if that's Key or Peel. I can never get the. T I forget which one's which. Uh, I think I think it's Jordan Peel. Yeah, Jordan Peel. Um, that trailer was fucking fantastic, and I love how they announced that. They're like, <laughs> I know you guys are tired of hearing about Skyrim, so here you go. <laughs> um, it, see, the funny thing is, is I, I don't think it would be bad. Like, man, I don't have an Alexa to, like, actually try it out. It's free, yeah. by the way, too. Like, you don't have to pay for it. You can just get Alexa mm -hmm. to play D&D &D with you. It's, it's, it's funny, because, like, people, like, thought, like, oh, this is a joke. This isn't actually happening. But then, like, no, it's, you can download it, like, after the E3 presentation they had it available for download for uh compatible alexas so yeah and people were like what wait <laughs> wait this is actually a thing <laughs> <laughs> which you know what all power to them because it, it, it plays very much like a, a text adventure game mm -hmm. like an old school text adventure game and i really like that uh, i just love in the trailer he's like i eat the cheese i eat all the cheese and then you're and, and the wife's like your doctor said you got to be careful about dairy right I eat all the cheese. <laughs> I eat all the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> First round up. What? What is? What is that? What is that? Uh, oh, it's sorry. It's the dragon call thing. Did you learn the skill to clean up? Not that level yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love the trailer. It's so great. Um, yeah, it's really good. But I guess there's only one thing we really have left to talk about, and I know you've yeah. been waiting. So okay. So, Fall 76, we got a new Fallout! Woo! So excited! But not so much, because there are going to be no NPCs. So, what that means is that it is a perpetually semi-online um, experience. Where you can create your own towns, you can make your own shops, uh... I like the setting. I think the setting's really neat, where it's it's only 20 years after the bombs have dropped, so we are, like, the first pioneers that were leaving some of the vaults uh, during that time. Uh, I think that's really cool. I like the story setting, but the problem is, is it, it feels very... I, I, I'm just trying to think that what I would like 
for a, a multiplayer Fallout. I'll, I'll start with this. What I would like for a multiplayer Fallout would be something like Borderlands. Mm-hmm. You know how there's NPCs, but you could have like four or five different people that could come in and out of your party. Yeah. Like you don't always have to go with four people or you could go with three or you go with two. That's sort of what I wanted if they ever did multiplayer in Fallout um, without making it an MMO like Elder Scrolls, right? Mm -hmm. But to make a world that is only like player based is great because it is great in concept but in actuality it's going to suck ass because of a guy that most likely will have the user ta- user username a rick pickle 5000 and his entire <laughs> job is to run around the wasteland naked uh, you know with a, probably a banana hammock or something He's wearing something that he's he decides is this is super funny. And he's just going to go around uh, blowing up people's towns, stealing their things and really just sort of. Like ruin the like because I'm the type of person, especially with these types of games, I like to get immersed. Like I like to role play a little bit in this. So like whenever options come up, um, I can I can choose whether or not my character is a little bit more like I want to. I'll do this thing for you, but you got to pay me type of deal. But because there's no NPCs, it's a lot of like they took the Fallout 4's build mechanic and said, this is what we're thinking of. I don't think there's no NPCs. I think there's got to be like some in the game. They state that the, the, the people you come across, the only people you will come across will be player controlled players. Well, how do people figure shit out? Because there's like... Is there not shit that you're going to have to do story wise? Like, see, that's the thing is I think they're going to give like they're going to have like a journal or something like that. And what it will be like from how they've sort of explained it is that you're going to have like a sort of set amount of goals, sort of like Minecraft, right? Minecraft has a set amount of goals, but no one tells you to do those things. So it's like, go f- rebuild a water tank so you can get fresh water so you don't die in survival or whatever. And the game itself, like they said, is you can play it single player if you want to. But what I think they mean by that is that you can not party up with people and you can still do things just like Minecraft. And there is some good things about Minecraft, like great things about Minecraft. like. I can't wait to see people's creations in this universe, right? Where they are building settlements for the first time, right? And it makes sense because every other Fallout game, you've you've gone out like hundreds of years after the bombs are dropped. So there are already settlements and other things that are out there for your player to interact with, right? So this is the this is like a big community coming together and creating something. Now, they don't talk about dedicated servers or is it like client based and that type of stuff so it's difficult like i'm gonna i'm gonna play this with blondie most likely both me and him are gonna venture off and we're gonna see what it's all about when the day comes out and you know billy's gonna get this game so it's probably oh i I know and jumping in there Uh, too um but like that's the thing is i don't like the idea that they're they're not embracing an MMO aspect. They're trying to like cater to both where they're mm-hmm. like, you wanted a multiplayer version. Here's the multiplayer. But it's it's basically Minecraft in set in Fallout Fallout. Oh. The Fallout universe. By the way, just just to going back to your question thing about servers, they did during the actual conference mention that the servers are all gonna be together. So they're not gonna be sectioned off. Oh, okay. As far as I understand, I don't know how they're going to do that because they're going to have bandwidth problems at some point. But who knows? Like, even if they don't have they don't have region servers. Like, I don't mind. Like, a, there's a North American server. I think I think they're going to have region servers, gonna... but you can play in any one at any time. Okay. Which which I like because there's one thing that I fucking hate about MMOs is when they got to make so many goddamn like distinctions. I know why they have to do it for like for like bandwidth reasons but like it just it just pisses me off because if i'll ma- if i make a character in a game i'm like and i find somebody who wants to play it like final fantasy 14 for example everyone i talk to is in a different server unless uh, other than me so i have to make a new character in that server 
Yeah. Well, see, the the thing is, is with 14, just because you're using it as an example, mm. I'm OK with it in 14 because a lot of the times and this didn't used to be the case. I just want to preface this. This didn't used to be the case, but all the content that we do, right, is done in is done in instances rather than um, like actual world based stuff. For most of it, there are a couple of world based things that you have to do in the same server, but a lot of them now are data center. So, yes, you're still sort of separated, but they used to have like this is like North America West and this is North American East. So you would go into North American East and most everybody on the East Coast would join that one because it's closer to them and then vice versa for the West, right? Um, but it didn't a in 1.0 it wasn't like that, but regardless, is like for example, the the Rathalos DLC that is coming out. Um yeah. it it doesn't matter if you're on Ultros, I can still use my main and play with you. Ah, uh, okay. Uh because that's an instance rather than it being a world thing. Mm. So most of the major content, like dungeons, uh raids, and other things that you would actually participate in you don't need to be in the same server as as your friend you can as long as you're in the same data center you're fine and yeah they're usually like north america japan oceana and uh europe okay so it's i'm not saying that there aren't certain things you can't you can't do like if i'm not in the same world we can't go hunting uh like monsters out in the wilderness because you're on a different like world plane than i am but that's not that's not things like dungeons and other things okay well that makes a little more sense i just like um yeah it just pisses me off when i have like an mmo or something like that and somebody's like oh i play i find out somebody else plays it and they're like and then i have to find out what server they're on and then 90 mo- percent of the time they're not on the same one as me and it just it, it's just like oh yeah. i guess i'm not playing this game with you unless i make a new character or you're not playing with me unless you make a new character it just it is kind of annoying. I understand why they have to do it, though. Like, there's a... There's oh, yeah. a no, they, they'd they have to. Especially, like, in 14 and in WoW's case, they mm-hmm. have to because of how many people play those daily. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you have anything more you want to say about Fallout 76? I don't really have much to say. Uh, it looks it looks cool, and I'll probably give it a shot, but I'm not yeah. super interested in it. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to try it. Like, I'll have a lot more... Uh, to talk about and see how they implement it it's just the way that they have described it and the way that i am imagining it from their very vague description it scares me a little because that's the thing is like for someone like me that likes to to not like necessarily role play completely but likes to not feel as if my my entire setup could be ruined by a guy that just wants to cause havoc even though I'm not, I'm not saying that that wouldn't exist in the universe, right? Like lore wise, there could be people that are fucking nut jobs and crazy. But that's the thing is where there's going to be a lot of griefing if they don't have a lot of thing, because the problem is, is even in the PC sphere and slash or the console sphere, actually, the console sphere is the thing I worry about the most is there are so many people that that just play games just to grief other people. Like we played Overwatch. Mm-hmm. You know how trolly players are in Overwatch? Mm-hmm. Just imagine that in an RPG type setting where people have various degrees of either like to play like lore wise or, you know, try to to play the game legitly. Oh, I mean, it's happened before. I've seen it happen firsthand. Um, <clears throat> if that's the case, I think they really should make PVE only servers then because then that way there is no none of that bullshit happening cuz yeah. i honestly i'm not uh, i'll admit i don't like spending you know a lot of time on building stuff but when i do i'd like for it to last longer than a couple of days like that's and that's the thing that's like me is uh, that's going to that turns me off of the game a little bit like i don't want to put time into something and then find out you know i don't play the game for a bit and come back and it's gone like yeah it just like if they're if they want me to get this game, they have to make PVE servers, like ones that you people can't just nuke your shit. So, I mean, that's that's just my opinion on it. Yeah, but uh, that. Do you have anything else you want to say or? Uh no. But I hope this is this isn't a trend. Yeah. And then Elder Scrolls Six is just like this mm-hmm. too. 
Yeah. This may be their test. That's the the scary thing is, is what they usually do with the Fallout series is Bethesda likes to test things with Fallout. Mm -hmm. Um, and like certain things that cross over into their new Elder Scrolls usually ends up was originally in Fallout. And that's it's a it's a very scary thing to think that this could be their test for this type of thing, and then they're gonna put it in Elder Scrolls mm-hmm. Six, and now we have two games that play very very similarly. Uh, so hopefully, cross our fingers that that isn't the case. Yeah. Um, if if that starts we'll showing see, up we'll in from there. Elder Scrolls, then I'm gonna have a problem. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, so on to a more lighthearted and silly, <laughs> um conference uh devolver digital i didn't watch this last year but the guys made such a big deal out of it last year that i'm like i need to watch it this year um it, the, the big thing they showed off and i'm just going to start off with this is uh metal wolf chaos xd um mm-hmm. for those of you who don't know what this game is it's a incredibly rare original xbox game um and i believe you have to import it too so you have to have like a system that'll play a, a Japanese game. This is an incredibly fun mech game, an over the top like it's an over the top like arcade style mech game, and for and it's it's just really hard to find now. So the fact that they're remastering it for uh for PS4 and Xbox One uh is really cool. I can't wait to yeah. get to play this because the original Metal Wolf Chaos, I've never had a chance to play it. I've seen lots of gameplay of it. It looks really fun and I just can't wait to see this remastered version. So, um you know, as silly as the Devolver Digital conference was, they still showed games off, which is good. Um it, do you have anything you want to say about Metal Wolf Chaos or I see the thing is I don't know very much about it at all. It's um uh, like at all like this was the first time like people were freaking out and i'm like mm-hmm. i guess i missed this one okay l- l- uh, I, did, I wasn't really an xbox kid back in the day like mm-hmm. my xbox had three games on it yeah it elder scrolls morrowind spider-man and actually no four dead or alive four or dead or alive three i was dead or alive three and um uh halo okay so That's all i played my xbox essentially for. essentially take over the top um, what Japan thinks of America's storyline, kind of like a time crisis or other arcade games of that era storyline. And then there's okay. mechs in it that you used to defend the United States from like aliens and stuff like that. Gosh. So it's, it's like Pacific Rim, the game kind of, yeah, it's, uh, it's just, it's just silly fun. Uh, and I'm really glad that, you know, it's now becoming going to become more available because it's just it's a really hard game to get it's a great game that's really hard to come by so this is really cool um another actually it's funny like all the games they showed i really like um like for like example concept wise my friend pedro is one i put down for games i need to get for switch <laughs> because it's only <laughs> the only console it's coming to a switch it's coming to pc and mac and then it's also coming to switch it's like a it's a game where you're like a a do it's a platformer where you skateboard but like it's like a metroid mania style game almost mm-hmm. um it looks really fun to mess around with some of the stuff you can do um i'm i'm just really excited to give it a whirl because that that's it's an interesting take on a platformer that i really want to give a shot um interesting concept i mean i never would have said you know what would make a great video game story an evil banana that wants you to kill everything named Pedro. I don't have much to say about scum. It's a yeah. pretty, sh- it's just like a parody on like shooters. Yeah, but still in and of itself, it's, it, it, and I guess it kind of, it sort of bleeds into serious Sam four as well, where it's just sort of like, look at our wacky zany shooter. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so I'm, cool. I, this is why I don't know if I I like I like their their philosophy. Like the games look fun, but at the same time, it's like I I don't know. Maybe I want I'm, a little bit more substance I, out of my video games nowadays. I mean, I'm not gonna let you gloss over Serious Sam Four because it's fucking Serious Sam Four, by the way. <laughs> I know, but like this is what I'm saying is like, look at our wacky shooter. You know, it's like 
I don't know. But I mean, Serious it, Sam, you know what you're going to get because it's fucking. I know, which I, that's the thing is I, I know what I'm getting. It's just like Serious Sam 3 was just like Serious Sam 2 and Serious Sam 2 was just like Serious Sam But 1. you have you have to have these to balance out the, oh my God, Battlefield and Call of Duty like bullshit. I maybe. guess, but it doesn't like it doesn't. It doesn't tickle my fancy, I it's guess. Just not for you, a lot then. of the times, th- this is the thing: is like every time I've seen Serious Sam, like used, or like people like talking about it or playing it or anything like that, is not on day one. It's replaying them like five or six years later, and they're they are like twenty less than twenty dollars on Steam, even less than that. They're usually like five ten dollars. Like they seem like five to ten dollar games not like full-fledged 70 80 dollar games to me i don't know unless serious sam 4 plays like a a 70 dollar game i don't know how i feel it probably will i but it also is a post-apocalyptic shooter (laughs) so it fits into the post-apocalyptic side of things again yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that's why I guess it's it's interesting because I really like the Borderlands series and the Borderlands series is a wacky, ridiculous shooter, but there's just there's a lot more substance to it. Yeah, it's and um, it's just it's just unfortunate because it's um uh who makes it again? Who makes uh Borderlands? Oh, um, oh god. Gearbox. Gearbox. It's Gearbox yeah. and they don't have a very good reputation right now. So <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. so uh a new like borderlands four i think we'd be at like i don't think that's gonna uh, happen no three well. there'd actually be three because pre-sequel isn't oh they haven't made a borderlands three yet no no there hasn't oh, been a shit. Borderlands 3 yet. they've been rumoring it for like it almost feels like a decade at this point but no like uh pre-sequel came out about two three years ago mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah, that was really fun. I love the Borderlands games. I play those with Horror Soul all the time. <laughs> it's usually the person I play them with. Um, so uh, now I think we should move on to probably, I don't know. I'm going to say it's probably the worst conference of the, the entire thing. Well, And the only reason why it's the worst is because half of the things in this conference had already been shown up. Exactly. So why did and they bother? Sad. Yeah, it's so sad. It's like... I don't know, like Square, because they have their hands and they're developing all types of different games nowadays. Like everybody, they'll always be synonymous to Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that. But they publish a lot of games now. And I really, really enjoy the Tomb Raider reboot games. So when they showed like extensive gameplay of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I was pretty stoked. I was like, oh, we get to finally see uh, this. And and they've turned Lara into like a rage murder monster at this point. Yeah, like, pretty much. It's a straight up murdering people left and right. But I mean, it, it, the same person that she that Nathan Nathan Drake was based off of, like all they do is go around giving snarky one liners and then murder hundreds of people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's just how it These is. These adventure but... games are almost becoming like more murder simulators than anything yeah. like they're all that, like they saw like ooh, assassin's creed did this so yeah and not to say that uh like things like the last of us and all mm-hmm. that are, are bad because they're usually really good like the tomb raider games have really good stories but uh lara she is she has been like and i think unreal likes to joke about this she has has become the tomb raider Many times now, but apparently this is the final story before she becomes the Tomb Raider. Yeah. So, part of me has this feeling that at at some point, halfway through the game, they're just going to shovel in a line saying, Well, now you're a Tomb Raider, Lara. Now (laughs) you're a true Tomb Raider. And then they'll finally remake the first game in this new style. (laughs) Well, again. Remake the the first game again. (laughs) Because it already had a remake. Yeah. And they'll just call it the original Tomb Raider. <laughs> yeah. So, other than that, uh, they showed off Just Cause 4 some more. The, uh, it, it looks, Cat- honestly, it, it looks fun, but it looks just like Just Cause 3, so. Yeah, it does. It, it's it's following the serious Sam mm-hmm. uh, feeling for me. Uh, they, they showed off uh, Captain Spirit again, which is out now. God, I gotta, uh, I gotta get that. 
I gotta download. Yeah, that. and it's it's free. It's free, and it's a sequel. It's a it's a prequel sequel to Life is Strange one. But you don't have to have played Life is Strange one to get okay. any of it. I have Life is Strange one, but like I I kind of really want to play the Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit before I play that. Yeah. Oh yeah, go right ahead. Um, then uh, they showed off what. I'm assuming is Square Enix's version of Dark Souls mm-hmm. called the Babylon Fall. I was very cinematic in trailer. We saw absolutely no gameplay, uh, but it looks it looks very medieval. I uh, if you like things like For Honor and Dark Souls, it's that's what it looks like. It's Square Souls. It's Square. It's Souls, being developed yeah. by Platinum. Like I know it's a uh, it's see that that's the most interesting part about it is platinum is making it so is this it looks like a dark souls game but it plays like a platinum game i am that could be interesting all for that that could be really I interesting all for that uh, oh my god I, I you know how much i love like Bayonetta <laughs> and Do- devil may cry and uh just it's the yeah, dark souls of devil may cry rising revengeance <laughs> oh man so good Fuck. So if it plays like that and it's not slow, like hell, fucking near automata. Imagine a Dark Soulsy game that plays like near. Oh my god. Yeah, make you actually play a, a Dark Soulsy game. You know, like that's just super awesome. Please platinum. Um, <laughs> <laughs> please give me what I want. Uh, there's not much to say about uh, the Quiet Man. They didn't really show a ton of it. Well, it had a live action. It was like a live yeah. action 3D, like and CG trailer. It was really mm-hmm. weird. Uh, I guess he, the guy's got to be quiet because the evil ghost monsters are gonna eat you. Or uh, he's like deaf or something. I don't know. Yeah, and I guess that could be really interesting. Uh, actually, the biggest thing that came out <laughs> of. The Square Conference is the actual announcement that Final Fantasy fourteen and Monster Hunter World were having crossovers. Yes. Uh so they showed mostly the fourteen side of this, but because I bet you they had more shit done than the Monster Hunter staff mm-hmm. or Monster Hunter World people did. Uh, at the time. We've at by the the time of this recording, the actual final the Monster Hunter World trailer for the Final Fantasy stuff has come out. Yeah. Uh, so we've seen the behemoth in action. Um, I'm really excited because Monster Hunter World, like, you don't know very much about this, but in the, the Monster Hunter World trailer of this, mm-hmm. at the very end, you see uh, behemoth summon a meteor, which happens in Final Fantasy XIV. But if you pay close attention, um, one of the, the things that comes down is, uh, like, other little rocks. And this happens in the King Behemoth fight in 14, where smaller meteors hit first, and you have to hide behind those small meteors, like, so you have to, like, line of sight it, so you don't get one shot by the meteor. Mm. And I saw that in the trailer, so I'm like, oh, they're actually gonna, they're actually using mechanics from the game in this. Oh, so is Behemoth, like, is Behemoth gonna be a, I forget what Monster Hunter calls it, but Monster Hunter's version of a raid? Uh no, he is he is a straight up like he's he's pretty much the the devil Joe slash new Nestra. Okay. He's not he's not like a raid, he's not like Kuva Kuva Laka, Kuva Tora or whatever. Yeah, Kuva Tora. Uh that it's he's not like that. It seems as if he's just gonna be out in the wilderness doing his shit. Okay. But he's gonna have mechanics to him. Okay. That we're gonna have to have to, you know, get used to doing while fighting him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is something that I'm actually pretty stoked for because one thing that Monster Hunter World lacks is the fact that, yes, the monsters have tells, they, they have their own things, and not everybody likes, um, you know, Kovalayaku, like the, the, the wind monster. Oh no, D- Devora or whatever is, its name is. Because um, it, it summons the tornadoes and the tornadoes obstruct the area. And we don't have a lot of monsters like that. A lot of them is just a lot of, like, just keep hitting the monster, it lashes around a lot, and that's it. I want stuff that has a little bit more meat to it, 
sort of like even with Lunestra and Teostra, like having to run away from it because it's about to do a giant kamikaze fuck you explosion. Yeah. Is cool. Nergante's right? fucking the behemoth. The behemoth looks like that, and on top of that, we're getting like dragoon armor with uh, emotes. Uh, one thing I noticed in the trailer, just for the people that may be listening to this that know fourteen, is one of the emotes. Which unfortunately, because they're emotes, you'll have to actually purchase them in the online PS or Xbox Live store. Mm-hmm. Um, is that is the circle of thorns which is an old dragoon move that is actually no longer in 14 hmm. it was removed when stormblood uh the patch for stormblood came out or not the patch the expansion of stormblood came out because it there was just too many buttons hmm. they felt so they were trying to sort of cut back on on redundant moves and stuff like that and it's this animation of the character spinning around on their pole arm and doing like sort of a kicking motion. A lot of us called it the stripper pole move because <laughs> it, it kind of looks like that when your character is dressed in like a bikini or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But it's it's interesting to see it pop up in Monster Hunter World when it's no longer actually in 14. So somebody, someone in uh, in the Capcom side really, really liked that move and wanted to bring it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's really neat. Like, I, I'm I'm really, really stoked for this. And it comes out at the beginning of August. Yeah. So and in both in both games. And the summer events have like already dropped. Apart so there's so much stuff to yeah. do in Monster Hunter right now. I actually streamed it the other night because I was like, fuck, I gotta catch up. I gotta do my so tempered much. monsters. <laughs> yeah. And I I guess they, they gave a a launch date for Dragon Quest eleven. If you're into Dra oh, excuse me. If you're into Dragon Quest. I, Which I am. I am. I'm just. It's not the first RPG series I go towards. Um. I also yeah. think like. Well, actually, you know, I I hate to make a, a huge aside, but what is, what is the that RPG that you would actually gravitate towards? The one that I would gravitate towards. Yeah. From what? From like the Dragon Quest series, or? Well, not even Dragon Quest. I'm just saying in general because everybody knows by now that I am a big. I'm a big RPG guy. So I will I will pick up almost any any RPG and play it. But you you've always had sort of a a mixed relationship with uh, it. Honestly, the these days, like most like mostly growing up, it was the collectathon style ones like Pokemon or yeah um, or the the simplified ones, but like not taking a taking a cut to the story like Mario RPG or. Paper Mario, uh, Paper Mario Paper more Mario. so. Mario RPG is still standard Square affair, but it's not like a huge adventure, stuff like that, yeah. or things that are like weird, like Earthbound. Like it's just like it's just an RPG that's set in 1990 somewhere. Yeah. So, like, just weird stuff like that. Like, I, and you know, every so often I'll play something like, um, I'll play something like, uh, like, uh, um, oh, what's the name of that fucking game that Corey lent me? Uh, um. White Knight something. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, oh, uh, it's like White Knight Valhalla or something like that. No, I think I know the one you're speaking. Yeah, about. I think I I think we're both on the same page. But like, I'll play something like that, um, or I'll play like a standard JRPG, like uh, like a Final Fantasy or a, or or a, even a Dragon Quest. But I like to keep it like the the problem is I don't have a lot of time, so yeah. I don't like to spend a ton of time investing in the game for long i say that but on like almost all the pokemon games i have at least like 40 to 80 hours in but it's pokemon <laughs> so i know yeah. where I'm, what i'm getting with it. so so that leads into the last thing that they showed off uh which was octopath travel which by the time of this recording has come out and i have sunk a lot of time into it yeah <laughs> and especially because it's on my switch as i've been going back and forth from the hospital uh, not me in the hospital. I work at a hospital. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just to clarify, if anybody's asking, uh, I've been playing. I've been playing it on my Switch as I go, and it's 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 lighthearted, but at the same time, it's also not. Yeah. It's one of those like mixture uh, bags, and I like its combat style. It's nice and simplistic enough that anybody that picks it up will get very used to it very quickly. But it doesn't hold your hand. When you decide I'm gonna go to that place that's five levels above me, it's it, it doesn't give a crap how low you are. It's going to show you that you should probably sit down and grind a little bit. Uh so 
it's a, I'm having a hell of a lot of fun with it. The only problem, the only concern that I've had because it um uh, it's called Octopath Traveler. Yeah. And the characters you think well it's eight people that go on this grand adventure where the story doesn't seem to be converging the characters together. It's like, yeah, they're on an adventure together, but they're not part of each other's story. Yeah. So they all have their own unique storylines that happen. So they have their own cutscenes, but none of the people that you recruit or whatever order you recruit them in, there really isn't any interaction outside of these like little side things, sort of like, um, like the tales, the tales games. Yeah. But even, even less attached than that. Like, the cutscenes happen is like just say you were following you're following um just because i'm thinking of abyss right now you're following luke he's the main character in tales of the abyss right but it all, all the cutscenes only had luke in them but all the other characters uh were were in your party during like the major story fights but then in when the cutscene happens again it's only luke again right that's how it is in octopath traveler and i i guess it's because i was thinking that depending upon who you played as first or who you recruited or how long into your adventure you recruited some of these people uh, that your story may alter or change a little bit was a complete misdirection. And they never like they never outwardly stated that that's what it was about. But just people, you sort of make assumptions about how they were uh, doing it, that you think this Octopath Traveler, the idea that you're traveling with eight other people that have unique stories, but each one can help another is not there and it's it's jarring i think um uh the guy that i like to watch clemps said it wildly it's like i i you're sort of following falling in love with it it's sort of like the first time uh he described it as like eating hummus right you you eat it for the first time you're like why did i put this in my body but then after a couple of retastings and eating it it just becomes like part of your diet and you're just like, yeah, it's hummus. I like hummus. Fucking hummus. But like that first initial time you eat hummus, you're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, that's a that's a great analogy of something of something that you think shouldn't work. That just on paper, it sounds disgusting. But for some reason, it tastes good. <laughs> it's good. So I think I'm I'm falling in love with it. But I don't know when I'm gonna go like head over heels for it type of deal. So we'll see. G give me another like hundred hours in it, and then I'll give you my full my full two cents. Hmm. So you're what you're saying is you're incredibly mixed on Octopack Trav. Yes, but in a good way. I'm on the I'm like I'm mixed, but I'm leaning into the good side. Yeah. Right. Instead of it being like definitively go out, get it, like, right now, to don't even bother. Like, I am more in the camp of going out and trying it for yourself and seeing how you feel about it. Because it's, it's, it has so many mixed, mixed things about it. I've considered it me. getting it, but uh, I'm also just like, part of me looks at it and I'm like, I feel like I won't enjoy it as much as other people will. I'll, I feel like maybe I won't, you know, Maybe it's just not for me, but I mean, who knows? I give it a, I'll give it a shot and see how, see what I think about it. But yeah, no, out of like, out of all the characters, I like six of them. One, I'm kind of eh, and the other one, you're just like, oh, <laughs> 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 right now where you're just like, you're, you're trying to fight through playing as this like this person's story because it's just not as cool as like the others stories mm. uh, no notable people for the people that are listening primrose really really interesting cyrus really really interesting and uh tressa so that's the merchant the dancer and the scholar those are the three that i recommend uh are the stories that i am most interested in to continue this is like weird, now, like... Moving on to Ubisoft, I think we've talked enough about some RPGs yeah. at this point. Oh boy, Just <sighs> Dance 2019. Okay, moving on. It's coming out okay. on Wii U? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they, they announced... What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I 
mean, you know, the Wii, the people still make games for the Wii. The, the, the amount of shovelware will never end on the Wii. It'll never end. Even when Nintendo says enough's enough, they'll still make oh more God. for it. Now, it's, it's the PS2 of last console generation, you know? Like, <laughs> it just never, just keeps giving, even though just no one wants it. Just fucking <laughs> Yeah. So, it, it's just dance. It's just dance. You ever played a just dance game? It's the same. It's just like that. Yeah, you can be a panda. That's cool. You can be panda man. Um, they showed more of uh, Yaga and Evil Two. Oh, God, it, the more I see of it, the weirder it is for me because I really like the first one. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're going with this very pseudo realistic uh graphic style where it used to be. You know, Saturday morning cartoony, sort of like the Ratchet and Clank and Sly Cooper games, right? Mm -hmm. Where it had a little bit more of an edge to it, but now they're really embracing the edge, and it's a it's a prequel. That's the newest thing they showed. Uh, they showed uh, what's her name at the end of the trailer? A young version of her. Shoot, Jade. That's her name. Got a young Jade at the end. So. It's just another CG trailer. Not really seeing gameplay yet. Mm -hmm. uh, which is concerning. And then, then next, next up, another Trials game. Oh, uh, yeah. This one, actually, I'm really excited for because it's on the Switch. See, I'm okay with the Switch thing. I, I, another positive I will give it is a lot of the tracks were made by community members like yeah. people that like play or like speed run mm -hmm. uh make tricked um trials and all that type of stuff because the last one fusion i believe it had like a huge editor and everything and tons of people love making things for that so they brought in like uh like the top 10 of all different types to come in and make a bunch of courses for this so that's probably the most interesting thing about it but it's really just another Trials game. They're not reinventing anything here. If you like Trials, here you go. Here's fucking more. Now that I have a Switch, I'm probably going to pick up Trials Rising because this game is like, would be, I, one thing I said when I first saw this, I'm like, this would be perfect for cons. Like, because the guys and I, we all have Switches now. So like, we'll all have like controllers and stuff. Like, it supports up to eight people. Like, yep. have like six of us going at it playing fucking trials. Like, it's it's such a game. Like, it's like it's like Happy Wheels on crack almost. <laughs> That's what <laughs> trials is like. So like, yeah, it's it's a it's just it would be, it'd be a really fun party game. Yeah, it's one of those games though that I always find that there's like for every good course there's like eight crappy ones. So it's it, yeah, it's, it's always been a mixed bag for me. I don't know. I just. It's fun to compete with friends and stuff like that, but as a standalone thing, especially if they're going to be charging like premium game price for it, I'm sorry, there are other games on the Switch or PC or anything that are much higher on my priority list than a game that hasn't changed since it yeah. was a web browser game. I mean, fair enough. That that's fair. You know, like, like like that that's just how I see it is like as much as I would love to be, like, on the bandwagon, and, yeah, having a bunch of, like I, like you said, like, having the guys, us all with our Switches, and we're playing it together, may be fun, but, like, there's something from the, um, from the Nintendo, uh, video that got me more excited to do with a bunch of people than, uh, than this, particularly. Is that the Division 2? It is such the Division 2. <laughs> a sequel that everyone asked for, but nobody wanted. And it's it's not quite post-apocalyptic, but it's getting there. Yeah. Um, it takes place after a civil war or something like that that's happened, or during a civil war that's happening because of, you know, random governmental times or whatever. Uh, they announced, like, pretty much the biggest thing they announced about this was the fact that it has three DLC scenarios, but they're going to be completely free. Mm. Which is, you know, clap, clap, tap, tap. 
Do a little, do a little uh, Crash Bandicoot jiggy. That's it. That's pretty much all I could say about it. It's, it's just if you like Tom, more Tom Clancy third person. Tom Clancy. Games, Sorry. Tom Clancy, rest his soul. They're gonna be making money off his name forever. Oh well, yeah, well, they they own it. <laughs> they own the Tom Clancy's brand. Yeah. But getting to what um, you were actually going to talk about, and a game I bought today. Yes, um, Mario and Rabbids. Um, the, Whoever thought that that was going to be great, huh? Whoever thought that that game would be so great that it deserved Grant Kirkhope to come up on stage and do a little fucking jig. Yeah, we do have to mention during during the Ubisoft uh, thing is they were so hip and cool with a lot of their things during their conference. Hey, they were trying so hard. Yeah. They always try. I love the trials thing when the guy fucking falls on the fucking boat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, what do they call it? Like, Big Boy Slim or something like I that? He, he comes out, and he does this every time. Like, it's, a, it's like a gag. <laughs> did, Fat Boy, did Fat Boy fall or whatever? It's like a meme or something. <laughs> He's always he's always there in his American jumpsuit and he always he always eats shit. I don't know if it like originally was he ate shit by accident. Now it's just like they're trying to write it off as something like, <laughs> he planned. just does now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no one will ever beat Super Dave Osborne. Nobody, no one will beat Super Dave. If you re- do, you remember old old kids Super Dave? I remember Super Dave. Yeah. No one will beat him for, for, for death-defying leaps of all types of <laughs> portions of death. <laughs> but the cool thing is, is Mario Rabbit's uh, the DLC is actually out now. Uh, yeah, for Donkey Kong. Right, and it's it's pretty big. It's a pretty big expansion uh, on the game, and it has a a ton of different new gameplay mechanics, which is really cool. I mean, probably the best addition was a cranky rabbit. That's that's just amazing in rights itself. <laughs> so was the Donkey so, Kong Rabbit something that was always in the game? Because I looked at the cover of the game yes. and I saw an end there. I'm like, wait a minute, this can't have the DLC on it. <laughs> no, no. Uh the the original he was a boss in I think World Two or Three. Oh, okay. Um he has real his boss fight's really fun. I'm gonna be uh, playing but, the fuck out of that game. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. And it's but. great it's a great game for on the go. Yeah. Uh, too. Oh yeah. Because I you can, can just I you can just do turns. You can it's turn based. You don't have to think too too hard. And some of the crazy stuff you can do is amazing. And Ouija is the best sniper in the video game. <laughs> He's just so good. I have a feeling like you just it's just because it's Ouija. No, no, he is really good. <laughs> Prom- I promise you, he will be part of your la- your like final boss team. He's that good. All right, then good to know. So back to. <laughs> The themes of E3 2018. Skull and Bones. More pirates. More pirates. More pirates. I mean, there it's this is the thing, is they're making a standalone IP that uses the Black Flag's Assassin's Creed ship based combat. Mm-hmm. Cool thing is, is it looks like um it's gonna be semi open world with uh with friends and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So you can like create alliances and then betray other people. And that type of stuff. It's see, this is the type of game where I feel that griefing is fine, mm-hmm. right? That we well, are a you pirate. Have your own you're ship supposed with to. your friends, or you can create a battalion or whatever. Yeah. And because you're a pirate, you know, you can you can go by the code or you can go against it. It's really sort of up to that. But it's not only that. Like, there's going to be a lot of like going into shore. You could actually play the game from what it seems like legitimately if you want. Like as unpirate as you want, so that's really interesting. Like you could actually become a pirate hunter, which is good. I think that's a good part of it, and it's a good mixture of PVE and PvP. It's not just PvP, and that's it. Like so, I I I'm gonna keep an eye on this. I was really I was really stoked to see that, and they showed off gameplay too. It wasn't just a CG trailer, um, and it looks it looks like it's gonna be pretty fun, especially if all of us get it. Uh, we probably have a a huge a huge uh, like little little fun time playing. It. Yeah, I mean, I might uh, I might actually pick this one up. I thought about trying it at Sea of Thieves, but Xbox isn't my console. It's my brother's, yeah. so 
getting a chance to play it is a little more difficult. <laughs> yeah. So next up uh, is Transference. This is interesting because it seems like it's going to be one of those psychedelic, like, creepy things yeah. that is made. And, I mean, they had Elijah Wood come out because he... Uh, He's like part of the the development of it. It's going to be psychological. It's going to be weird, mm -hmm. uh, and that's all it really looked like. It looked like it's going to be semi VR and not VR. Like it's going to be both. Yeah. It, um, that's it. Trans like, escape escape the family. Transference. How I learned to uh, forget about Elijah Wood and watch the Hobbit. <laughs> I don't fucking. Know. Uh, I don't know. It's one of those things. It's one of those things where. I'm a little worried because it has like a family abuse background and everything like yeah. that. And I'm like, are we going to get a little too Resident Evil seven on us here? Like it's not going to be Welcome gross. To family. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not going to be gross and, and you know, like viruses and stuff like that, but still yeah. it's going to have that feeling of like hiding and, and waiting and all that type of stuff. So, um, yeah. yeah, they they show more of uh more of Starlink Battle for Atlas, which is the yeah. um which is uh Ubisoft's um a toys to life game kind of. Uh but it's yeah, also yeah, like it's... a it's also like a, a battle space shooter. What's the biggest thing of note that really came The biggest out thing of note about it though is that they had an awkward moment with Shigeru Minamoto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, so Star Fox. What he's it. referring to it, Star Fox is going to be on the Switch mm -hmm. version. And after beating uh, the first Star Fox, I gotta say this makes me pretty hype. Yeah, I'm I'm really stoked. Like it, and the cool thing is, is from what it sounds like now, I I could be like eating my own shoe here, but it sounds as if you don't need the plastic figurines to play like you used to with Skylanders. Yeah, because Skylanders in and of itself was actually pretty fun. The problem was, as you half the game was locked behind behind plastic figurines because yeah. you needed a certain combination of them to open certain yeah things, i right? i think the point of the little figurines is is how you do on the fly mods so like yeah you have your ps4 controller or your switch or whatever and you have a stand to put your your ship on so if you want to make an adjustment mid game you can like quickly move a piece off and put another piece on and you're still in the game that's what i feel like it's going to be um that's what it feels like they were showing because anytime somebody made an adjustment to their ship, it, they showed gameplay of it like immediately afterwards. So, I mean, you could probably can just mod do like uh, modifications on your ship and whatnot before you get into space battles. But this is just a way of being like, well, I'm not prepared for this because I didn't bring the um, anti tank missiles. So I guess I better, you know, attach an anti tank missile launcher to my thing. See, I would I would be okay with that if. They provide like tokens instead, sort of like what um, Disney Infinity sort of did towards the end of its life. Mm -hmm. um, was that they had these these tokens instead of like the figurines, right? So if mm -hmm. I needed uh, a missile launcher, I could use a card or a figurine instead mm -hmm. of uh, uh, buying the plastic thing. So it becomes a more affordable. Like obviously, you still probably have to pay like five dollars. Yeah. Or something. I mean, I mean, That's... I wouldn't be surprised if they did AR cards because the Switch has an AR reader inside of it, and the other consoles like wouldn't be that hard to get make like a little accessory that you could use to scan AR pieces. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Especially if the, if it comes with a dock a dock port anyway, the dock right. port could just have it installed. Right, Ex so. exactly. That's the other thing too. So um, I actually like it's a Toys to Life game. I actually want to try it. One that I'm actually kind of excited mm -hmm. for. So, and we haven't seen Shigeru Miyamoto since they took him backstage. So, I'm fairly sure Ubisoft abducted him. I'm pretty sure Ubisoft like killed him. He's 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 yeah, gone. They didn't kill him. They abducted him. Yeah, because they're like, we need you to make more rabbits. You gotta let us use your property more. They, they tried asking, please, and us. he's like, no, I have other games to work on. So they were like, all right, we're gonna just kidnap him. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it was so weird because they had him sitting in the crowd, like he had his own seat. And then they got him up on stage and then told him, it's like, he's going to come backstage with us now. It was very awkward. It was so odd. Mm -hmm. It was like, all of us were in the chat and we were like, did they just like abduct Miyamoto? Like, <laughs> what's going on? And then we never see it. Like, they bring out like everybody at the end of the conference, you know, every, all the people that, uh, that uh, talked about the games and everything. And for some strange reason, Shigeru Miyamoto wasn't there. So 
I think I think we should probably send help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we probably should send help. Miyamoto, please tweet if you're okay. Yeah, please, please, please let us hashtag know. Hunter Base Podcast <laughs> to let us know. Yeah. Um. All right. The last, the last two big things out of it is there's some DLC for For Honor, uh, Marching Fire, which pretty much just introduces the Chinese warriors, um, into the game. Mm-hmm. So anybody that's really excited about that, a lot of it, it, it's one of those games where I never, I never really played too, too much of it because I had a friend that was really into it, but. He was more into the medieval aspect than he really was the actual game itself. Mm. Um, you know, it's interesting. It looks like it's going to be free. I'm not sure. Uh, for for anybody that already owns the game, so that's pretty sweet. They've been pretty good at uh, keeping up to date with that game too, yeah. from what it sounds like. I, I I always thought For Honor looked kind of fun, but I just felt like it was like a game that I'm like, there's other games I want to play. And uh, over it, so I'll probably play it eventually. Yeah. yeah. So an interesting, the last interesting thing is they actually showed off gameplay of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is the next uh, Assassin's Creed game. Yep. Um, there, there's a I I have put an asterisk on me wanting to play this because it they took a year off, and then they made Origins, and Origins was really, really fun. They cleaned up a lot of the problems because they had that extra year to tweak it. Now, they're back to the one-year formula again, which is scary. But, but see, the thing uh, that's interesting about this game is the development team working on it has spent like something like five, six years working on it. So Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Just because it's like, but whenever they say that, they include the concept phase. So that means that no one's actually making the game at all. They're just talking about what they want the game to be about. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it was in concept stages for probably two to three years where like people are like, this is what we want. This is what we want. But this is the first game where you are able to choose the uh, protagonist's gender. Uh, some people say, oh, well, uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate allowed you to play as a male and female. Yes, but their stories it wasn't like they were one or the other. They were two characters that you played as, right? It's It hopped between playing the male character and the female character. You didn't choose one at the beginning, and then that story is their story. This one is the main character. This is the first time in Assassin's Creed where the main character is monogender, and you pick the gender. And on top of that, um, you know, being inclusive, it doesn't matter when it comes to romance and anything like that. You can be as heterosexual as you want or as ho- uh, homosexual as you want or anything in between from what it seems like. Yeah. yeah and that's cool. It's High five neat. to that. You know, like that's the type of uh, choice based system that these types of games need to have. If they're going to embrace choices, mm-hmm. you should let you play as whoever you want. Yeah. However you want. I, I agree with that. And I think, I think that taking that year off was good for Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed because it's like, I heard that origins was really good. And this one looks like it's probably going to be following the same, I wouldn't say the same formula, but the same, like, uh, the same energy that, yeah. uh, Origins did. Um, cause like after and, they made Black Flag, they just kind of like, it, yeah, it took a nosedive. Yeah, like, <laughs> and the, the, the cool sci-fi part of the game disappeared completely, mm-hmm. which I was really, really sad about, um. Because Desmond, Desmond's story in Assassin's Creed is one through three, and all the the uh, the middle ones between two and three, um, like was it Revelations and Brotherhood? There's like there's like uh, the Desmond trilogy and like the Ezio trilogy, or whatever. Yeah, like see, all right, no, it was uh the Altair trilogy, and then there was the the uh, Ezio trilogy. They never really talked about Desmond as like part of the trilogy because he was sort of part of that entire thing because he it was his ancestors and then after spoiler events happen in assassin's creed 3 Mm -hmm. uh you no longer follow desmond so the character that is diving into the your their memories doesn't have a personality anymore i guess they decided oh well uh you it's just you it's just you diving into your own memories now yeah and like this weird thing and it it took the sci-fi out of it, which wasn't like a big part of the game. So I never will state that they were like a huge part of the game, but it added such so much more mystery and 
intrigue to the story rather than it it just being you know like here we're just in medieval times Mm -hmm. no we're actually reliving historical events through the lenses of an ancestor and that's that was sort of interesting on how on how the story and it's sort of whenever the player tries to go off and do something crazy you would desync because that's not how history had it it was sort of a a weird way of creating a pseudo open world area but still have it story focused so i thought that was really cool but we'll see uh the graphics are the only other thing that i need to mention on uh they're looking they're looking pretty dated they feel like they are still using unreal engine 3 which they really really desperately need to upgrade (laughs) so hopefully hopefully uh the game doesn't look as raw as it does right now come release and I don't want to talk about the crew, so we can just move yeah, on. Yeah, there's nothing. It's a car game. Uh, you you have boats and planes. Boats and planes mm-hmm. are in the crew now. Yay. Boats and It's planes. coming out. Boats and planes. It's coming boats out at the end of the month. Planes. Please enjoy. Okay. All right. Holy crap, there's so much to fucking talk about. Uh, a lot of this is doubled up. The good thing about the Sony conference, again, poor old Sony got shafted because... They actually decided to have their conference during E3, not before it, like half the other <laughs> the other conferences. Uh, so really, there's only a couple of things to note. Yeah. Uh, and they were long presentations, too. Yeah. Which was really, really actually kind of I kind of liked, though, the shenanigans with The Last of Us stuff uh, was a bit ridiculous. I don't know. You you didn't watch it live, eh? You watched it later. Yeah, I watched it later. Um, okay, because I watched it live with the guys, and they... Okay, just to set the stage really, really quickly, um, they had everybody into this this tent, this revenue. It's a, It was right? actually and, a church, I think. Well, no, it, it wasn't. It was like a tent that on the inside looked like a church. Oh, okay. Uh, they had set it up to make it look like a church, sort of in like a church slash barn with a setup and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Then they brought out somebody that played uh, the main theme on banjo, I believe, mm-hmm. um, of Last of Us. And then they went into the gameplay trailer uh, with cinematics and very, very scripted, very similar to the original Last of Us trailer, um, where it's like you see Ellie during this this moment in time but it's heavily heavily scripted so you don't know how much of it is like actual gameplay versus like cinematography gameplay where it's like it's in the game but they've they've polished it up to make it look like really really immersive right yeah what um, one thing that uh I'll just mention real quick is one thing um that uh David Winter the guy who's developing maximum football 2017 told me about or 2018, sorry, told me about in game development is like, um, he said that he really liked The Last of Us, but he knew that like the way they had made the game was uh, that like events are like cutscene events aren't happening in real time; they're all close ups because that's what they can render on the screen at that moment. And that's why. And I, when I was thinking back to this, The Last of Us Part Two's little trailer thing, I'm like, this could be all pre rendered then because there's a good chance that there's just too much action going on that maybe the, unless you've got like a high end PC or whatever, maybe you wouldn't be able to run this. Um, and this is a PS4 yeah. exclusive. So I'm just like, I don't know how much of that I have to agree. I don't know how much of that was actual gameplay. Like, and how much, well, of that like was- I, it is gameplay. I will not deny that it is gameplay. <laughs> However, some of the more cinematic parts like that look cinematic in the trailer is because they, they can actually, after recording the gameplay, they can pick and choose how the camera reacts to the gameplay. Yeah. So it looks it looks more visceral, right? It, it really feels like you're in the tension with Ellie, right? And that's mm-hmm. really cool. But if the uh, I, it's very similar to the original Last of Us trailer, where some of those camera angles, um, the fact that the HUD isn't on. Um, I kind of like the idea of playing games with the HUD on sometimes because it it gives you more a immersion and b it gives you that really feeling like i have to count the amount of arrows that are in my back my my satchel mm-hmm. right or my quiver sorry and that's and that's really cool because that's what happens is 
she fires a couple of arrows off and now she's out. So now she needs to scurry around and find more. And you can do that in the game, but because the camera was so well and so tight, it felt as if someone was manipulating it behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Now, what um, uh, your friend, Mr. Winter, was talking about is when they do cutscenes, a lot of characters pop in and out of certain shots because it's easier to remove the actual player-controlled player uh, out of the scene and then put in dummy actors because then you can set the scene up properly without having the character go into the cutscene and it looks awkward and ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't see a lot of that type of behavior out of the gameplay. Yeah. Um, a lot of it was, like I said, it felt like trickery of the camera that they took the existing camera in the engine and they they screwed around with it. So mm-hmm. it makes it look more cinematic than it actually is. But it's still all in game. It's all in all in engine, like in gameplay. It's just they they've tweaked it to make it more cinematic than the game could play. But hell, you never you never know. In this case, it may end up being just like that. I'm a play it because I really like The Last of Us, the first one. So I'm really interested to see where I, they go. I still this. need to play it. it. It was bundled with my PS3 and I still haven't played it yet. <laughs> Oh man. One of these I got things. a I got a um we did a free promotion back when I used to work at a game store mm-hmm. and we got a bunch of extra copies of the PS4 remaster of it. Nice. So that was my first time playing it cuz we all got a, all these free coupon codes to hand out with other like console giveaways and other things like that. So I mean, I got lucky. I got the game for free, but damn I would easily go me. out and and play and pay for it because it was that good. <laughs> I was like, damn, should have snagged me one. <laughs> <laughs> I could have, but you haven't played the PS3 one that came with yours. Yeah, so, I, like... so I'll probably play that at some point. <laughs> that might be a good stream game. Who knows? So the next one, which I'm actually even more excited about than um uh than The Last of Us is Ghosts of Tsushima. Can, can we just start off? By saying, though, that between this and Last of Us, they had to fucking move everybody to inside. Yes. And then we had f- a Japanese flute guy. <laughs> and he was awesome. He was awesome. He he is actually one of ten people that are, or I think it's even five people or something, that are recognized master players mm-hmm. of that. There was a big controversy around him, but we won't go into too much details. It's mm-hmm. just because of his skin tone and the instrument that he was playing, but he is actually a certified master of that instrument. And I can only imagine how, how ridiculous it must be to try and actually make noise out of those things. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, while we always joke about Vuvuzelas and stuff like that, mm-hmm. uh, back during, I think one of the world cups a couple of years back. Yeah. Have you actually ever tried to blow into one yeah, of those? One. It doesn't make the, the noise that you you think it should. I have one. You have to like doing it right. You have to you have to do it a certain way to make it make that noise. Exactly. So it's always whenever I see instruments like that and I see people up on stage doing that type of stuff, it's just like it's magical to me because I'm just like, man, I used to play the trombone back in band. I used to play the sax, alto sax. Yeah, yeah, but like that's the thing. But man, Ghost of Tsushima, my open world samurai game. I'm a sucker for this. This is gonna be great. I have a feeling that this is going to be really cool. But again, it feels like there is some cinematic trickery going on Mm -hmm. um, with the camera and how things behaved. I really want to play it to know if it's really like that. But it looks incredibly enticing and fun. It's it feels like a proper it's sort of like I always like Bushido Blade, uh, Mm -hmm. like as a fighting game. And I really wanted sort of a more semi-action semi-realistic thing like obviously this isn't realistic because some of these guys take way too many slices from a katana that normal people could not shrug off um but I, i'm really interested to see see more of this game see what the story is about because it it takes place during uh the mongolian uh invasion of japan mm-hmm so that's really that's a that's a rich part of history that actually a lot of games from Japan haven't really touched on, mm-hmm. um, which is it could be intriguing, very intriguing. I don't know if there's anything else you want to say about it. Uh, it looks like an interesting game. Uh, I'm gonna have to try it out. It's I'm the same way you 
you feel I have to try it out before I like, you know, before I'm like, oh, I'm going to get this. Yeah, but I mean, I look at it, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a potentially another exclusive game for the PS4. Mm-hmm. Man, they're, they're, they're really like, their lineup of exclusive titles is kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, like now I'm quite, I'm quite taken back by, I'm like, there are, a, there's a good reason to own a PS4. Mm-hmm. Not saying that owning an Xbox One or X One One S or X or whatever extra consonant they decide to add to it in later later things. But man, if I didn't have a next gen console now, I would have got I would get the PS4. Mm-hmm. Hands down. Yeah. Um we got to see more of control, which is uh a game I think they showed off last year. Yeah. Um but they really only showed like a cinematic trailer for it. They didn't really show it. It had some game from what it looked like. It mm-hmm. had some gameplay. Yeah. I'm actually, this one's been kind of on my radar for a bit. So this is one I actually want to like try because I like like time bending stuff and all that. I like when games yeah. do that. So this is kind of neat that they're doing something like that in a more cinematic style. See, the only, the only thing I have a feeling is, um, they they use the the game is called control but i don't think we as a player is going to have too too much control over how this type of stuff happens um and the way that they seem to be manipulating time and uh like reconstruction and everything like that seems very it doesn't seem like the player is actually doing it it's just like the player holds down button you make bridge out of old pieces of wood or I rearrange the the catwalks so I can get higher uh and stuff. It it gave me a very um uh infamous vibe actually. If I were to compare it to anything is it it looked very much like infamous. So we'll we'll see. We'll see how you that You thought it uh, was infamous, but it was up. me Dio. Yeah, but it was actually Dio. Cuz he's a concept or the person. Cuz he stops time. Savaldo. Yeah. Savaldo. <laughs> The game, basically. All um, right, now the big, the one. big announcement of this. The thing. big one that made everybody lose their shit from the. Past I'm really conference. excited for this. The remake of RE2. I'm 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 really really excited for this. I've been playing Resident Evil Seven, uh, uh for Terror Time, uh, yeah. on my channel, and I, I fucking love that game. And the fact that they're remaking mm-hmm. Resident Evil Two with that engine is just yeah. Uh, it's, it's gonna be so, and good. it's over the shoulder, mm-hmm. and it's over the shoulder. It's like Resident Evil Four, so you know mm-hmm. how much I love that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Like- so like, it's got it's got everything. A part of me, a part of me, like I understand the reason why they they've done this, but one thing that I liked about the old games is atmospherically, they were um, like you'd think that during this time it'd be very dark and and, and visceral and just almost photorealistic like even just looking at the uh, like a little screenshot of it here you know like you really feel that this is what it would actually look like but the old games they had a lot of like color and the areas looked like you know things were still on like the police station still had functioning lights and and anything like that like it should it should be on generated power because most police stations and other things like that yeah. especially if you know the story of resident evil 2 you'd think that it'd have a little bit more juice that even during you know uh, an apocalyptic uh proportions of like an entire town being infested by zombies uh that it would still have a little bit of vibrance to it whereas this one they're going for the grunge they're going for the darkness and i'm i'm sort of i'm a little sad that they're doing that because even the remakes of the original resident evil the resident evil remake uh, that came out on GameCube, it still retained a lot of the mansion's color, but also still its 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 claustrophobic nature. Um, uh, and I I'm excited for this game just due to the fact that these zombies look goddamn threatening again. Thank God they're threatening, uh, because they could easily have just made them like one shot headshot Ganado type things, but now we're getting big clumps of them. They take a hell of a lot of bullets, and it's it's survival horror again, just like what Resident Evil Seven did is brought things back. Yeah, 
you know, gave you that feeling of claustrophobic uh, puzzle solving and and scary enemies, mm-hmm. though. That's the only complaint that I had about Resident Evil 7 was the fact that you fight a little too many uh, black squid monster things uh, for my lightning. Like there wasn't a lot of variety, but knowing Resident Evil 2, there's a lot of variety to go yeah. on. And I can't wait to see how terrifying these dogs are mm-hmm. in this one. Mm-hmm. Now, like it's. And the only problem, there's one big fucking glaring problem about this game. Mm -hmm. It comes out three days before fucking Kingdom Hearts 3 does. Not cool. So this, this is my proclamation right now, and I've made it in, in, in private, but I'm making it in public here on the YouTubes. Please, for the love of God postpone kingdom hearts 3 again yeah because because i can't rely on capcom to push their date back to give it more development time but i can rely on square enix to push back their release because honestly because if they don't that's not good because like people are going to be like do i want kingdom hearts 3 or do i want you know resident evil 2 they'll be forced to choice choose and And i I mean for me it's an even easy choice it's resident evil 2 for me but like, yeah. Um, but there's but people like out there me, like, like I like both of them exactly. Equally. People have been waiting for Kingdom Hearts three for so long, but they've also been waiting for a remake of Resident Evil two for so long. So like, yeah, <laughs> it's so it's like mm-hmm. I know I'm gonna end up spending two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, like in the span in the span of and people are like two hundred dollars. Yeah, here in Canada, the games are like ninety dollars. They're not like ninety so, bucks. Like that's what I was, taxes. You everything. know how much I paid for um for Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle today, brand new. How much? 30 bucks on an EB right. sale. Okay, Guess how much EB it is sale. regularly? 79.99. Yeah. Cuz Nintendo's nefarious for that. Actually, I was wow. found the Switch games are cheaper, but like it's still like I got a 79.99 dollar game for 29.99 today. And that's that's doesn't happen that often. Normally the game starts 79.99 and then after tax you're looking at 90 bucks. Yeah. And see, that's the thing is like, I'm going to like, and I, as much as I would like to play Resident Evil 2 Remake, I know the story of Resident Evil 2 Remake. They're not, they're not going to change too, too much of the story. And and see, this is why I don't mind being spoiled about that. But Kingdom Hearts 3, I, I don't want to be spoiled. So I'm going to play that one first. And this is the thing. Regardless if I pick them both. This is the thing for me. Like I own Resident Evil 2, but I've never played through it. So, have you played through any Resident Evil? Uh, no. I've gotten kind of uh, like I got we got we got pretty far in Resident Evil Five and um Resident Evil Seven. Like I'm really enjoying. I'm getting through, but uh, I haven't played through any of them. Um, but uh, and two and three are the ones I just have no experience with. Um, three is my favorite. Yeah. Um, uh, because I really liked I really liked Nemesis. Yeah, it's it's is... Brad's favorite too. He was telling me all about it. So yeah, um, but I recently picked up because they were having a flash sale, um, on PS on the PS4 store for Resident Evil Zero, which is my second favorite Resident Evil, mm. and and so they're like the HD remakes of Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil yeah. Remake for the game. Yeah, the 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 remaster of the remakes. Yeah, I got those. Yeah. I got those. Um, when they came out on uh for ps4 and i haven't disc. played i haven't played resident evil zero or even the remake for probably about five six years so i'm really excited to go back into it and realize how bad i am at them now um uh, and if i play through them again uh maybe the next time me and you are together there are games that we can beat in one sitting well I, not, I'm, I'm doing resident evil one long. with unreal i've already said that but zero i haven't okay. got it in the Four, so we could do oh, zero is so much fun and people people can bitch about having to swap characters but uh i really like the idea that you know you put something down and then you switch to the other character and the other character can go find it and you pick know, it up. you know so, and, and 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 we did technically do like an episode of power plays of that real shooter version of zero so oh yeah we could play right. we could play well, the we actual dark, uh, dark side chronicles or whatever or no uh umbrella chronicles we could play the actual zero so yeah and then we can make all the zero master jokes with it (laughs) zero i love the way he says it it's so funny resident evil zero 
<laughs> he has this like weird like little <laughs> oomph to it for some strange reason. But anyway, then they showed off uh, the pirate world in Kingdom Hearts. Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, yeah. Which, every every time, Angry Goofy ruins every single cutscene <laughs> ever created in any Kingdom Hearts game. Fight me. Every time something serious is happening and it cuts to Goofy, given his, like, scowl, you're like, I can't take this seriously. <laughs> like, it's fucking Goofy. <laughs> Serious. Oh, I goofy love it. Face. Yeah. And then, uh, moving on, because we've, I've already, like I said, we've already talked about Kingdom Hearts 3 at length, or I did at least. Um, <sighs> Death Stranding! Death what? Stranding! So we've got- the uh... fuck is Death <laughs> Stranding? Okay, from what I've gathered, alright? There are these invisible things that eat you uh, because they like babies. They like babies that can be born from you. And Norman Reedus can carry a shit ton of things. That's, uh, that's the thing. It, it seems like a pack mule simulator right off I the have bat. This, every, I know I've said this before, but every time I see more about this game, I'm worried that it's going to be fucking terrible. That it's gonna be awful, and it's gonna be like <laughs> Kojima being, "Look at how fucking artsy I am," and I'll just be like, "Yeah, but your game sucks." Yeah, like I see. The thing is, is I'm after just... playing, after playing, uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, mm -hmm. Metal Gear Solid 5's gameplay, regardless of you, we're not even gonna talk about the story. Just the game itself is so fun and satisfying, mm -hmm. and that isn't that has nothing to do with konami that had mm -hmm. all to do with kojima productions and a lot of the people that worked on that left with kojima mm -hmm. when konami sacked him and, and now they're working on death stranded so i am actually not concerned about the game i the gameplay is probably going to be really fun it's going to be really engaging uh, but asterix we will not understand what the fuck is going on and there are going to be 20 30 50 minute video essays on YouTube mm -hmm. trying to show how oh, yeah. cool and, and gritty the story is, but it won't matter because the major majority of people, 80% of the people that play it will be like, I don't get it. Dude, like, <laughs> like when this game comes out, game theory will not shut up about it. I guarantee you they'll have like oh, at I least know. 10 videos on it. See, the, the problem I have is with this is like, um, I yeah I like like I've there's stuff that Kojima's made that I've really been interested in like uh like I some of the best stuff I think he's made was like Metal Gear Two Solid Snake, um Snatcher Police Knots stuff like that so those are the kind of games that I like that when I think Kojima that's what I think about the yeah. the problem that I have is like I the the feeling I have is that this is another situation of this could become Mighty Number no. Nine. This giving Kojima like free reign to do what he wants, but see, it's not crowdfunded, so no, I would no, I know, like, but like, but that's but, that's the difference. I know, really, but you, but I, my worry is, is that you know, people say all the time, and like, oh, I wish you know these creators got to do everything they wanted to, to make the games the way they wanted, but at the same time, I'm also like, there's a reason why they don't, because a lot of the times they have bad ideas, and I just have this feeling that this like. I know, I know, I'm probably on the minor or minority on this, but there's like there's every time I see more of this game, I have a feeling like this is not going to be good. This is going to be bad, and it's not going to live up to the hype. Yeah. See, I I have a feeling the story, the story is what's going to make most people uh, fight back against it, unless unless the gameplay requires you to like play an entire section with it with controls reversed because some monster is in norman reedus's head mm -hmm. and he's trying to be like super like visceral with it where it's like yeah up is down and left is right and that type so of so you like to play super mario sunshine but see like that's really funny it's really like see that's tongue-in-cheek in a way that didn't really affect gameplay mm -hmm. Hell, even in the remake of 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 Twin, like in Twin Snakes, when they gave you the first person mode, which was in Metal Gear Solid Two, because they made that game on the Metal Gear Solid Two engine, mm -hmm. um, it would it would reverse your first person camera to Psychomantis, 
him looking at you rather than you looking at him. So you couldn't use it during the Moss fight. And I'm like, see, that's that's a small thing that doesn't affect the overall fight. But if he's trying to make some sort of weird, like social economic structural thing with the gameplay where like only half the things and it like reverses your controls or you know you have to float upwards or do some like really obscure thing other than like pulling out one controller port and sticking the controller in another you know like that's as far forward as i want it to fuck with me right i don't want this game to just be like I'm just going to randomly crash, but the randomly crashing is actually something that's supposed to happen. You just have to wait 10 minutes and then boom, the game plays again. Or if you don't wait for that 10 minutes, then the game realizes and reboots you as a baby or something because mm-hmm. you've reset. You know, it's like it's funny when Mr. Rossetti comes out in Animal Crossing and yells at you for hitting the reset button for Christ's <laughs> sakes, but like. Like that's that's as far reaching as I want my gameplay visceral feeling. You know, like there are enough games out there that have decided to play around with uh, the player's experience. And I really hope that a triple A title like such as this doesn't go ham with that. He's more about the melodrama. He's he's Japanese through and through. The melodrama is way more important. Uh, So. There's going to be a lot of stoic shots of Norman Reedus's face. Um, and it's interesting because I would have I would have really enjoyed playing a Silent Hill directed by Hideo Kojima. But yeah. I'm looking at this and it's starting to get a little surreal in the story department. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I'm not really worried about the gameplay. I think it's going to be it's going to be a fun game, but it's going to get like seven to six out of tens. Just due to the fact that you have absolutely no idea what the fuck's going on. Um, uh, just a side note, I think a game that I'd like Kojima to make would be if they ever made like a serious like Evangelion game. I feel like that's. Oh, I feel like Ano, uh, Ano's style would mesh really well with Kojima. I just think that'd be really cool. But then, of course, there's Zone of the Enders, so. <laughs> so. <laughs> Zone of the Enders is, is probably good enough. Yeah. Uh, if, you want, if, you like, if you like Evangelion, yeah, no, play Zone of Enders. Yeah, yeah Zone of Enders is good. Um, yeah. They showed a, a text trailer for Neo 2? Yep. Just, uh, hey, we're making a second one only a year after the last one came out. If you blink, it looks like the Doom Eternal trailer. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little bit. Uh, I didn't play Neo. Uh, not saying that it isn't good. It's if you like Dark Souls, Samurai Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got a little bit more action flair to it. So I'd actually more compare it to Bloodborne than I would uh, Dark Souls, particularly, mm-hmm. which I like. I like. I loved Blood Bloodborne. Yeah. I I don't particularly like Dark Souls, but I love Bloodborne. Yeah. So it's it's interesting it's interesting maybe it's because you know how i like my my uh steampunk gothic uh like aesthetic yeah but japanese aesthetic doesn't really do it for me so that's why i sort of i passed on neo yeah i mean more neo not a bad thing um yeah also not a bad thing it's something i'm actually starting to get excited about that i wasn't before fucking spider-man spider-man like yeah this newest uh thing they showed off with uh the the inmates and all that stuff and the like, yeah the sinister the, six man sinister, like man like spider man's one of my favorite superheroes so it's like i and you know the previous times i showed it i'm like eh it's probably just gonna be another mess spider-man game but after seeing this i'm like fuck i kind of really want this now yeah are you excited to play as sasuke oh boy yuri lowenthal voice yeah yuri, yuri lowenthal uh he, he plays spider-man in this one so you get to swing around as Sasuke. Sasuke. He's here. I'm me! Spider-Man the Digger! <laughs> 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 Fucking, yeah. But yeah, no, it's got a very, it's got a very, um, very Batman Arkham series Yeah, that's what people it. are saying. It's like, it's um, like the next, the next th- best thing since the Batman Arkham series. And I'm like, I, 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 I'm starting to feel that way. Like, this feels like it's going to be yeah. something really huge, actually. And I'm actually, because, like, the Amazing Spider-Man games, like, the the ones uh, that came out a couple years ago, were 
were fun. Um, they weren't perfect. They were definitely movie cash-in games, but it felt like a little bit of time went into it. I mean, if this is Insomniac, I'm not, I'm not really worried that the game is going to be bad because Insomniac has never let me down ever that I can think of. Can't think of anything off the top of my head doesn't pop out as like, wow, that was fucking terrible that Insomniac made that. Well, are these the guys who make uh, who made uh, Psychonauts? Yeah. Uh, I, well, I mean, the only disappointing thing I can think of is the lack of Psychonauts. Yeah, there's just not another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the it's the big thing. So we'll see. We'll we'll see. Yeah. Uh, some of the other stuff were some VR things. Uh, Black Ops. I don't know very much about the. The Ransen, yeah, did the a Ransen Ransen or, or whatever. whatever it's called. I mean, it looks interesting, but like also, I don't have a PlayStation VR, so I probably will never. Yeah, it's it. made by From Software, mm-hmm. so it, it may be interesting. It's it'd be very cinematic. It'll be very vague. Oh. Um, though this is one thing that uh, this is kind of what I'm hoping that this game would be like. Is remember games like um, Raven and Mist? Oh yeah. Yeah, I remember. I would love a proper VR game like that. Like a like a VR Mr. Riven. Yeah, where you have to interact with certain things and do something to make certain things happen, right? Like there was this whole thing in 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 Riven where you had to, you know, like construct this this like crank or lever that then you placed in place and it brought up like a submarine thing that you could go in and then you had to do like a a puzzle but in VR. But just think about in VR where you're able to interact physically with these things, right? Yeah. That that would be really interesting to me. And I'm getting vibes of that, but we don't really have games like that. Like yeah. another game that I played recently uh was uh Go or Gone Home. Oh yeah. Um, and that's exactly it. Like you you sort of wander around, there's a couple of puzzles here, and you have to sort of piece together what's going on, like why are you on this island? who inhabits these places because you never really come across anybody you just sort of have to piece together what's going on and and what was going on in this island i think that would be a very interesting vr experience yeah. but at the same time are we going to get that like i don't think so it's it's probably going to be like most vr games now is either you know like rhythm based or very very like crazy silly shit or horror games yeah I mean, I want I want a feeling of exploration. I mean, that's that's the big thing that like I would feel that VR would need that needs. I, I know I know that, <laughs> and this is not going to help because you just said there, there's a lot of horror games VR, but I'd love to see like an a, like a VR like Enemy Zero or uh, or probably the closest equivalent to that today would be like a like a VR Dead Space. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you're still doing some exploring technically. Though the reason I brought up Enemy Zero is because the enemies are invisible, so the only way you could hit them is with sound cues. So um, use a sound cue to, in the actual game, use a sound cue to walk around on the space station or on the spa- uh, spaceship. And the only way you know that the enemies are getting close to you is a sound cue that you have gets louder and louder. So I could imagine that in like a stereo style thing in VR. That'd be really mm-hmm. interesting. Um, Oh, what was that game? That game where um, that you played as a, a like a blind woman, but oh, she fuck. had sort of like super super hearing where it, she could use echolocation. Fuck, I I know what you're talking about. Um, and I can't think of it. Yeah, I, right off the top of my head, I can't remember it right now. But like, see that type that type of thing in VR, right? So you're in complete blackness, but every time you make a footstep and you look down, it sort of illuminates or. Every time, you know, you you reach out and you knock something, it could give you like the space in which you which you occupy, really giving you that sense for the first time of what it would feel like to really only being able to hear and not being able to see. These are the these are experiences that, you know, like we have people in our lives that go through, but you can't relate to. On like on just a regular like functional level so that's what i think vr could really help us with in a sense so that's where i want to take vr games i don't want them to just be like look at this cool like spaceship console 
And now you can press the buttons, and then your ship goes and looks. I don't want them to be single room experiences. You press the buttons. I want them to be. um, And if we have to break my immersion a little bit and put a controller in someone's hand to get their character to move, then fine, do it. Like because honestly, like, like you know, I know, like, I, I mean, Kenji Anno is no longer with us, so uh, like a, a VR. Enemy zero is not going to happen, but like the closest thing we'll get to that is probably like a VR dead space, and like that's not a game you can just sit in a room and move around. Like you have to actually move your character, and I'm totally fine with breaking my immersion a little bit if it means like I can still play the game first person but use a controller to just do basic movements and move my head for a camera and everything. Like that. Or like think of a another another. I know this is like randomly off on a tangent, but yeah. like. At the same time, like, uh, Scott reviewed this, uh, Lifeline. Yeah. Like, the idea that you can switch between cameras and you can direct somebody um, and, like, help them by things that you do, but you yourself are stuck in, mm-hmm. in a communication booth, right? You can't actually physically help, but you can, you can interact with the, the person across from the thing. And now, now this isn't PS2 level of voice recognition. This mm-hmm. is, like proper pc oculus rift things that are designed like this i mean both me and you have condenser microphones now like it's yeah it's they're they're good quality microphones right we, we, so, al- we also live in a world where like um voiceover technology has gotten way better since then i mean look at look at your phone siri or um, google yeah both of them are a lot better at recognizing what you ask them to do so yeah. so it, the, these are these are the things that vr needs to do to pique my interest to make me mm-hmm. actually say i'm gonna get a playstation vr or i'm gonna get an oculus or whatever the other one is yeah. but we have to talk but. about the real biggest announcement of e3 2018 free black ops black maps ops. yeah of past black ops maps so if you pre-order if you black like, ops 4 yeah if you like black ops 4 you can get with PlayStation Plus right now. You can get Black Ops Three for free because if you have a copy or save data of Black Ops Three, you will not only be the coolest kid in school, but you will also also you'll get the maps that were in Black Ops Three on top of old Black Ops maps from previous games as well. I love how you sold that. But like that. <laughs> but the coolest kid in school, remember, <laughs> you'll be the coolest kid in school. And then I mean, if you haven't played Black Ops 3 and you have PlayStation Plus, I mean it is free. So like if you want to know why people like Call of Duty, there's a free reason for you to get it. We, we, and I don't think um it, they said download it for free for one day only, but I'm fairly sure it's still free right yeah. now. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so, I don't have to worry about that because we have a physical copy because yeah. it's not mine, but it's somebody else's in this household. So, um, yeah, also, so, um, Destiny Two is getting some more DLC that we can delete when we get killed in Monster Hunter. <laughs> yes, exactly. When you die in Monster Hunter, you, you delete Destiny Two. It's very important, <laughs> but, um. It looks as if the character that Nathan Fillion played is dead. <laughs> so your wisecracking robot buddy that just doesn't shut up in Destiny 2, uh, he's, he could quote-unquote be dead because he's a robot, so you never really know, right? So <laughs> it's just one of those things. Um, so I, I think maybe Unreal's kind of excited for it. I don't know if he's really into into that, but at least this time, this uh expansion won't delete half the maps <laughs> that you could play on before i mean it could delete the old expansion but i don't i don't know yet like <laughs> yeah, I should hope not. Um, yeah and then make you pay for it again but you know besides all the controversy yeah. about it destiny 2 is actually really fun i really quite enjoyed the the destiny games but yeah some of the practices have made me stay away yeah um yeah. just because i'm just like i can't support this mm-hmm. If it's going to be like that. Yeah, I understand that. I've I've heard from other people who play Destiny 2 that they were pissed. So I I understand that. Um, finally, I know you're not really, you don't really care about this, but Trevor says the universe, um, Squanch Games, like 
the games they've made so far have been pretty awesome. Like uh, the Rick and Morty VR game, I really want to play at some point, and I really want to try this Trevor Saves the Universe thing. It is Justin yeah. Roiland's comedy style, so if you don't like it, you probably won't like this game. But yeah, um, see, that's the thing is, I'm I'm a little I'm feeling a little oversaturated. Mm-hmm. The thing I liked about Rick and Morty is it was fresh and new, mm-hmm. but it's it's doing the Family Guy thing. Where it's like, man, I really liked Family Guy, but then it's just, it's popping up everywhere. Yeah. Um, you're getting clips here. It's, it's also, it's also following the Steven Universe approach of things, mm-hmm. which, um, not saying that Steven Universe isn't good. Um, it's, it's got a lot of really great messages. It's, I think it's a great show to show kids, but it's getting to a point where I'm like, all right, guys, it's not, it's not Jesus, you know, like I'm not going to live my doctrine by this. And when I don't laugh and say, well, I didn't find that as funny as you did, then I'm not going to get lynched for it. (laughs) So that's the thing is like, it seems like it'll be fun. It'll be a quirky game. And you're right. If you don't like Justin Roiland's uh, comedy, you're probably not going to like it, but I don't want it to, be oversaturated because that's the worst thing that can happen in a comedy right is it can get so saturated by the same type it start he's starting to show his humor too much that some of the craziness that happens yeah you just you just don't you don't it doesn't phase you as or it doesn't make you laugh as much see this is why i think it was good that there was such a gap between season two and season three of rick and morty because it didn't like like it, it was just long enough that you like forgot like what kind of humor you did unless you like watched the show recently with like me. Maybe that's why season three felt yeah. kind of stale to me because like I had already seen some of the best shit. Um, except for the first episode of season three, that's my favorite episode of Rick and Morty because uh, of what they did with it. But uh, um, but but I agree. Like maybe it is a little too much oversaturation, but. I haven't, I'm kind of out of my Rick and Morty phase. Like, I still like the show, but like I'm kind of out of my phase for it. So I feel like because of that, I feel like I would really like Trevor Saves the Universe because I'm over it now. So I, it's easy for me to get back into it at this point. Yeah. Oh. So we're going to skip right over the PC gaming show, guys, because there's too much fucking stuff to talk about in it, and it's boring anyway. So yeah, a cares. lot of the games, like either, you know, certain things are, are, are linked to other things that are on consoles and PC Master Race Frex your muscles. Yes, you guys have the best video games ever created. We bow our head to you. You may speak of them at volumes and add us or hashtag Hunter Base Podcast us all your opinions on it. But we're gonna move over to the Nintendo conference now. What? Set. It, and it's the only gaming conference that's actually shit other than Square Enix. So I mean, we just don't <laughs> want to talk about it. Yeah, it's just. It showed like not to get me wrong, the PC gaming conference. It showed off a crap ton of things. But we're also but a lot of them are expansions, um, indie games that you know uh, I want a lot more indie games to show up because then yeah. we actually get new and interesting things. But a lot of it's just like, hey, look, hey, look, this and this and this yeah. and this and this and this. It's and I mean, and it's also all it there's also a reason why we're not doing limited runs uh, conference because all they really showed off was games that are already out. They're just port. They're just releasing ports or like physical versions. of them. So there's not really yes. much for us to talk about there. Um, all right. So on to Nintendo. Yes. So the first thing they showed demon X machina. Holy fuck. This game looks cool. And I want it. Yes. I want it. I want it. Right. Like, can I have it now? Uh, no, no, they haven't. They have not given no. us a, uh, release date, but I this. want it but now. Part of it. It it looks like a more arcadey version of Armor Core, and I'm so for it. Yeah, it's because it, Armor Core, the only problem with Armor Core was the fact that so much of it was micromanaging every little piece of your of your mech, which mm-hmm. to some people may be their favorite part of Armored mm-hmm. Core, I get. But man, when I I created this awesome looking mech, I pieced all these things together, and then I loaded it into the mission, and then it had like five seconds of fuel reserves and i was like what i thought i gave it and then i realized that i didn't have the right stabilizer it was 
Yeah. I don't want that. Uh, I want an arcade shooting right. giant mech thing. I agree. And it looks like Nintendo's delivery. I agree. I like the thing that takes me out of Armor Core. I love customizable robot games, but the thing that takes me out of it is like all the shit you have to worry about. I'm just like, I just want to make a robot and make him fight. And I mean, that's what uh, LBX was for me. Like, you just got to make your little robot dude and fight. And then this to me looks like a more hyper. Uh, intensive version of virtual on and i fucking love virtual on i love virtual on so any robot fighting game that's going to you know take it into high gear i'm all for i want this like right now like please just nintendo right now just give it to me now i just just just... (laughs) actually don't give it to me now make sure it's polished and it plays really nice then give it to me but as soon as as soon as humanly possible please yes yeah what what he said basically <laughs> i want it now but i want it good so i want it now. i want it good so i'll wait but i'm watching your nintendo uh then they uh, they showed off some dlc mm-hmm. for xenoblade chronicles 2 which seems really interesting i actually still have to beat xenoblade chronicles 2 so i really don't want to dive too i have much to into beat that. the first one and x so <laughs> 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 well the cool the cool thing is is about the xenoblade chronicles yes there are nods to to the xeno the xeno saga like mm-hmm. all throughout it yeah uh but they're not really linked other than like one character uses the monado mm. you know and you're just like oh how did you get monado and then you find out that the monado is monado and blah 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 backslash you know, like, backslash yeah <laughs> backslash wave and like the voice acting <laughs> <laughs> don't forget me it's, oh my god i i linked it a while ago <laughs> if you guys haven't look up don't forget me xenoblade chronicles 2 it is it's wonderful god damn it. it's wonderful it's awful but it's wonderful uh but yeah no just some dlc i was not expecting usually rpgs like this don't get dlc so it's pretty sweet that it looks like they're either continuing the story or they're creating sort of like a story within the story that sort of happens during the game uh, so it seamlessly plays into it, which I think is really, really neat. Um, also, the, there was the challenge tower thing announced too, uh, where you actually get um, what's his face, uh, Shulk. You get Shulk as a as like a like an arm, an arm character. So he's the he's like the little like sword that you use. You like you use his version of the Monado, and he's your like companion throughout it which is really neat and i think one of the girls from it as well i can't remember her name off the top of my head right now but yeah really neat i'll have to check out xenoblade too yeah 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 don't forget me i'm really feeling i have to to show you that after (laughs) (laughs) um so they did a whole treehouse thing on Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. It already was announced before E3, but they basically just went over some additional details, like uh, the Pokeball Plus will come with a Mew, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, one yeah, good luck getting your hands on that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, uh, I am... You think, you think Mew is rare? <laughs> <laughs> the plastic Pokeball, oh my god. Oh my god no wonder they the put Mew Pokeball. in it. Um, but if, uh, I'm one of the reasons I wanted to switch. I'm really excited for this game. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go. Um, it's uh, like a full, like an HD remake of the original games. And okay, they added in the Pokemon Go catching mechanics, but I'm like, eh, that makes sense. Yeah. The only thing I'm kind of salty about is the fact that I, I, I mean, it's good that it interacts with Pokemon Go, but the idea that you can transfer all your Pokemon from Go to it kind of pisses me off. It's like. If you got a rare Articuno during one of the the events, now at the start of the game you can just have an Articuno. Yeah, but I don't like do it, that anyways. Like I know you don't do that anyways, but I'm just like that's that's the amount of cheese that's gonna what, go into this what, game. What it's I, gonna feel so. I hope actually I kind of hope that it's not full seventy nine ninety nine. I hope that it's a fifty nine ninety nine. What? I I don't think so. It's I, Pokemon. It's gonna be full. I know price. it's Pokemon. I know they're gonna try and rip us off, but just the way that it looks. As cool as it is, and playing it legitimately without all the integration with Pokemon Go will be really fun and engaging, just like the original Pokemons. I really, really hope that uh, it doesn't feel like just a like a, an upgraded 3DS game. 
Uh, because this isn't the Pokemon game that they were referring to mm-hmm. when they talked about the next main installment of Pokemon would be on the Switch. This is yeah. just sort of like, this is kind of what the engine's going to look like. Yeah, it's like a, it, and also uh, the fact that it's a, that's a, that they're doing a remake to test things out leads me to believe that's probably why they're doing this first. Just because yeah. it, you say, they repackage a Kanto game, people are going to buy it. I mean, they've already sold me on. And just going back to your other thing about transferring things from Pokemon Go, yeah, people are going to do that. But usually what I do is with Pokemon games, even when we had like the ability to transfer Pokemon from previous games with the Pokemon Bank and stuff like that, is I'll play through the game first the regular way. And if I want to do like a like a fun party, I'll pick like low level Pokemon from like Go, transfer them over to my game, and then raise a new super team from yeah. in my second playthrough. So. I, well, I never go that uh, route. Jeff, I know people will, but I never go that route where yeah. I just put all my good shit at the start of the game, because what's the point of playing it if you do that? Yeah, and more more information from the time of this recording has come up, uh, come out about it that wasn't released during E3. Uh, their gen, like, Pokemon exclusives are back, which sucks, because I was like, I really wanted to start with an Eevee rather than Pikachu, but Growlithe, my favorite Pokemon, is a... Is a Let's Go Pikachu exclusive. I'm so. I'm kind of glad that Sancher's exclusive to Let's Go Pikachu because I wasn't going to buy the Eevee version because you can't fucking evolve the Eevee. So what's the point? Yeah, I I mean going through the game with a full uh, like a fully jacked normal Eevee kind of makes me happy. Yeah, <laughs> but at the same time, it's it's interesting. It's interesting. I and part of me kind of hopes that just because you start with Pikachu or Eevee doesn't mean that they're the only ones that follow you on your shoulder. Oh, no, like, no, I no. Really kinda... I, I don't... Uh, well, all the Pokemon follow I, you, but on your shoulder, I don't know. Maybe they might be the only ones. Yeah, maybe. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, Eevee technically it, it, sits on your head. Now, <laughs> do I get to yell at Pikachu to pick up a fucking ball? When I say, Pikachu, carrot, and he brings me an apple. Because that's what Hey You Pikachu. I was gonna say, did you have re- title, do you have repressed Hey You Pikachu memories or something? <laughs> no, I do. Oh man, do I hate that game, but love it at the same time. You know, it abused me in a way that was like step on me, senpai. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> um, but like, that's the thing. When I see, like, I actually when I first saw the Pokemon, let's go Pikachu. I. I gritted the the handles on my chair. I was like, "Not again, <laughs> not again, <laughs> no, <Nope>, no, <nope. laughs> not not Pikachu again." Oh. But no, it's like you said. It 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 plays like they're repackaging Kanto one more time, just to make us all all you know nostalgic and nineteen nineties like kids waking up on Christmas Day to play damn Pokemon's under the Christmas tree. Uh, and then your brother gets Super yeah. C, which is also or Operation C, which is also a good game, but isn't Pokemon. So yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I am actually for the first time in the last four iterations of Mario Party, I'm actually excited for this because this doesn't look like Happy Go Fun Time Friendship Cart Ride anymore. Mm-hmm. This is Cut Your Friends Down mode. This is what I want. I want. I wanted this, and we finally did it. They finally did Nintendo, it. Nintendo, you did it. You listened you to us. You made another N sixty four version of Mario you, Party. You listened to us for once. You realized, <laughs> you know, even though you did that advertisement for Mario Party ten, which I was kind of confused about, where you're like <laughs> the game where you like to hate your friends. I'm like, but we're in a car together. You, you, you guys just don't understand. <laughs> But this time, it seems like they fucking listened and realized yeah, people only played to basics and realized people only played Amiibo Party in Mario Party 10 because that was the closest Mario Party game in that game. But yeah. um, and this is the game that I was saying earlier that I'm like, this is what it's going to be playing at the con. Oh, yeah. You know, we each have our I like the idea that we put switches together to create like weird, complex mini games. Obviously, I hope it's not all of the mini games. I hope it's just sort of like gimmicky I, oh, ones. Like I just, I just realized something. Stuff like that. Mm, I just realized something. How the fuck am I going to record this? Because well, it depends. We may be able to turn like the exclusive like 
map making things off. But I wouldn't want to like remove mini games out of the thing, so I would be like, but like it's just, you you turn off the the voice mini games whenever we record uh the Mario Party Six. Well, because I didn't have the microphone, so yeah, exactly. So in this case, if we want to do a Super Mario Party at Anime North, then we just yeah. we just have to play them without those those specific or i wonder if they're i wonder if there's you know what they may they may just say because we don't uh, we have it in dock mode it just there are regular versions of those mini games that aren't built around what we create yeah i'm I'm wondering if well i'm wondering the other thing that'd be really cool is if uh um if you have enough switches if they'll basically say okay you can leave one in dock mode and it can be a monitor for the other switches that you happen to have that you can Mm -hmm. use for the actual mini game so say if there's like four people with switches one of them could stay undocked, and the other three could be used for the actual gameplay. Like, who knows? We don't even know yet what's going to happen with this. So, but I'm just happy that we're getting a proper Mario Party game after yeah. nine and ten. Because ten fixed a few things, but it also just kept a lot of the same. And yeah. and after all the stuff they were saying, all the developers were saying about Mario Party, about how they wanted to make it more inclusive and all this stuff, and it's like people who don't play Mario Party. To have fun. <laughs> well, they do have it. Have fun. Real but life. It's but it's not about. It's about competing against mm-hmm. one another, right? It's not about everybody. Everybody enjoying it. Yes, we always like to joke and 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 jostle and hate each other for getting you know like for me right. My big thing that I'll never live down is getting three stars <laughs> in one turn. You know, like that happens. That type of you stuff. Know, you happens, know what actually right? hurts more. <laughs> SCR not paying attention to the game, playing a switch over there, and him getting a star from one of the boxes, and I didn't get a fucking star the entire game. <laughs> I know, what but the like that's fuck? the thing: is something crazy like that can happen, mm-hmm. but then that person either wins or they they lose. Exactly. Like that that game, and I have to always reiterate that game where I got three stars in one turn, where everybody's like, "I'm not playing anymore. This is dumb. I can't believe it. I didn't win that. Yeah, I know. I didn't win that game." I know, you know like, but it's just the that's fact what's so cool that it about it. That's what's so fun about it, because we hate each other in the moment, but then afterwards, it's just like, we just love laughing about all the crazy stuff that happened during the game. It's, it's like pants. Like a party. <laughs> it kind of is. But moving on, moving on to an RPG series that you know I like. I, I'm getting um, into it more, too. Uh, is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now, I will preface this this better be one fucking game nintendo because after what you did with fire emblem fates and conquest uh, or birthright conquest no and then there was a third dlc chapter by the way called revelations which you had to pay for so you didn't actually get the whole story they separated into three games. This better not be three separate Switch games. This should be goddamn one. I do not want to see three games. Because they haven't mentioned if it's multiple games or it's one. See, the fact, However, that, the fact that it's called Three Houses makes me worry now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that Three Houses makes me worry. That they're going to somehow split this game into, into three games somehow. Mm-hmm. And I hope not. I should hope not, uh, too. Yeah, though it doesn't like from what they showed, it didn't seem as though that was the case. It seems like the story is three storylines that converge together. Now, I'm cool, totally cool with that because I loved Sweeken in Three, and Sweeken in Three did just that. So, hopefully, cross our fingers, that's what it is. The gameplay that they did show off. Uh, I can I can sort of get on the the train of man I don't know if this is exactly what I'd want from a console version of Fire Emblem, especially after playing Fire Emblem Warriors, right? Where you actually get con- to control uh, the actual heroes. Fuck, that's it, another Switch game I gotta buy. God damn it! <laughs> yeah, like it's there's just something there's just something about it that. It feels it's sort of the same feeling you get when you play Path of Radiance on the GameCube. Uh, there's just it's just something odd about playing a console version. Now that is sort of taken away by the fact that the Switch is portable. So I 
I have a feeling that that awkwardness that I, I am looking at and remember from uh, the GameCube version of a Fire Emblem may be completely thrown out the window because it's on the Switch. I can I can do it while I poop. I can play it while I, I sit on the bus. I can play it while it, on, on like a country road. Uh, or whatever you know like doing whatever it is people do with their switches nowadays go out to the park chilling and relaxing shooting some b-ball you always gotta find a way to get school. that fucking song in here don't you <laughs> <laughs> but regardless i i'm apprehensive because there are a couple of i'm i'm watching you nintendo i'm watching you those feel like Somebody's watching me. <laughs> All right, so Fortnite's on there. Cool. Um, cool, sweet. You can play. Cool thing is with Fortnite, you can play with people on Xbox. That's pretty neat, and people on PC. But if you're on PS4, sorry, you're not in the cool Fuck kids you. club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not in the cool kids club. And if you have linked your email address to your PS4 version of Fortnite, fuck you, doubly. You can't actually use that account on any of your systems so yeah too bad you got to make a new email address or a new account and sign up for fortnite so you got your fortnite with your pc xbox and nintendo switch buddies and then you got your exclusive one for ps good thing i haven't signed up for fortnite yet (laughs) but yeah that's pretty much it uh there's nothing nothing too too crazy with fortnite i think there are some switch exclusives where you can get like mario-esque like attire mm-hmm. and stuff for your character i mean that makes that's, sense it's it's nintendo but, that's what they yeah. do they like to do that type of stuff uh overcooked 2? overcooked 2 let me tell you overcooked <laughs> is fucking awesome i'm so it's glad super I'm fun i know it's super fun but i i'm interested to see how it how it will how it will ramp up from the first overcooked i never thought that overcooked as fun as it is needs a sequel this is the but sequel we'll we didn't know we needed it's the sequel we deserved okay i hope so hopefully it it it, it follows the batman principle uh but we'll see killer queen black Killer queen yeah click uh um, explodes oh. <laughs> Two players can battle one another in local co-op mode. And it's like a single player 2D thing. It's platformer. Another 3D plat or 2D platformer on the Switch. Meh. Not saying not saying that there aren't a lot of them, and I, I am not not playing things like uh Iconoclast and and Hollow Knight, which uh came out Hollow recently Knight. with all the Hollow DLC. Knight. Hollow Knight is so good. If you have not played Hollow Knight, please. Yeah, I'm getting it for Switch. Please play it. I will. <laughs> I will. And we already you already talked to the length about Octopath Traveler. Octopath. So I think Actually, will. one thing is the demo is still up. Uh, I would advise you to download that because you can play the chapter ones of all the main characters. Okay. Well. So you can see if you like the game, which, holy crap, we, I miss demo discs. I miss demos in general. Uh, so... If if you're thinking, if like you said, you're on the fence about it, you're thinking about buying it, download the demo. The demo is still available. You can still get it. And if you do like the game, everything in the demo transfers over to the actual game. So if you did all the chapter ones in the demo, you don't have to do it again. Okay. Which is really sweet. Well, my Switch is right here. It's finally set up. I can just go download it. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Um, we're not going to go through all the fucking... Okay, I mean, I'll list some of this stuff off that are really mm-hmm. interesting. Um, you know, Captain Toad, more Wii U, uh, yeah. more Wii U games being ported over to the Switch, which is good because now people will actually buy them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but good games that deserve to yeah. be bought, you know, just just didn't get their time in the sun because that Dragon Ball Z Fighters, I was not expecting that. I might actually get that for Switch now. <laughs> um. Uh, Mega Man 11, uh, <laughs> Mario Tennis Aces. Mario Tennis Aces looks so good. It's just, it came out during a time that Octopath Traveler did, so I put it off. But I can, will get Mario Tennis Aces at some point, because it looks fun as Can well. I just say I'm also happy that Paladins is on, and Ark are both going to be on uh, Switch? Or, yeah. But, but that's fucking rad. And and the remaster of World Ends With You on the Switch oh my is going to be so good. 
So if a lot of people never played The World's End with you, I can never find it. It's so hard to find. Interesting handheld RPG that I've ever played. Yeah, it, it, like, it's it's yeah. a hard game to find now. I wanted to play it, but it's so fucking hard to find. So yeah. I'm so glad it's getting remastered for the Switch. Yeah, and those are really the ones that like stick out to me. Obviously, Minecraft is already out now via the time that we record this. Uh, that Sushi Striker thing. Have you seen some of it? It's fucking hilariously weird. Uh, yeah. But that's pretty much it. And then I guess now we get into the the thing that was 30 minutes of that conf- of the video which by by any stretch uh was needed to happen mm-hmm. uh was super smash bros ultimate yeah everyone is here everyone is here everyone if you loved pichu pichu's back if you like snake snake is back and He's voiced by David Hayter again for all the people that were mad that he got got the shaft in Metal Gear Solid Five. He's back, and he's gonna he's gonna talk at length about a Palutena. <laughs> if you're so inclined and interested, all the stages are back, every single character, and finally, Ridley is playable. Yay! And. They they always joked he's too big for Smash. Ridley's too big for Smash. So you know what they gave him? They gave him a hunch. So now he has back problems, but now he's small enough to be in Smash. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, this is always the thing that always bothered me is they always joke and they're like, oh yeah, no, Ridley's too big to be in Smash. But then Bowser is there. You know how different sizes bowser has been over the years his actual canonical height i don't think exists he's just sometimes he's he's huge other times he's only like three marios tall they haven't given a proper size to bowser so why couldn't ridley be in it and now they've answered the question now the only caveat the biggest caveat of of smash bros ultimate is because everyone is here that there's not going to be a lot of new people added. As far as we know. So, as far as we know. Uh, so, I, I'm i still going. I'm still going with the, the thought that there's probably going to be about six new people. Maybe four. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll cut it back a little bit and say there's four. So, there's still room. There's still room for, for some of our, our most wanteds. Uh, like Travis Touchdown. Um, uh, mm-hmm. I, like I said, I want Simon Belmont, but Konami's never going to let that happen. Um, and yeah, that's like, that's the thing is there's not a lot of people that I, I'd really quote unquote want. I mean, I mean, we I already guess. went at length about what we wanted. So like, yeah, it, we've already talked about when they, they showed off that it was the, the from the Nintendo direct mm-hmm. podcast. Um, which you can find in the in the podcast playlist, Winky Face. Yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, no, it's 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 interesting because it looks like an upgraded version of for Wii U. Uh, I I I dare say that it is. I don't want to say it's a port because it doesn't really look like a port. It looks like they've changed a lot of the assets they've they've gone through it but this is the thing when it comes to games like these i'm not expecting incredible graphical leaps so it's very difficult to understand whether or not it's, if it's in a new engine if it operates differently but all the characters have been tweaked and they went over so much about the differences from their their iterations in smash 4 that in any case i think it's just a brand new game you know, it's just, it's like, it's, I guess, probably the closest thing you could do is say, well, it's Smash 4, but it's a championship edition. But it looks like they've sped up the game even more. So the game plays even faster. So it plays more like Melee, you know, like, but whatever. You know? one, I'm, one thing I really like about um, this new Smash is that They've added a risk reward system for dodging. 
So yes. if so one of the things I fucking hate about melee is people abusing the fucking wave dash. First of all, it's not a strategy, it's a bug. It's a glitch. Yeah. yeah, but people are but that's how people play fucking melee competitively. What I like about this is it's like you have to think about when you need to use your dodges because if you use them too often, they're going to get slower. And actually, if you watch the Smash Invitational, it affected some people when they were playing because they were like, they're like, yeah. I can't, I can't dodge as much because I was getting, I'm getting slower as I do it. So they have to, you know, you have to be, you have to and be. See, that's a that's a an interesting mechanic that isn't like tripping, right? Like in yeah. brawl, the the tripping. I understood that they put that in there so people wouldn't do too many fast movements. Uh, it was designed to to level the playing field a little bit uh, by having a little bit of RNG on how your character moves. But that's the problem is it's like it's more of an annoyance than an actual strategy. So that's why this dodge thing where some people, some diehards will be like, my game and my mechanics and uh, it, it feels like it adds, like you said, it adds that level, that extra level of strategy. Yeah, because now you have to think about every move you make, even more moves ahead. And even every breath you take? Every move I'll, you make. I'll be watching. <laughs> Actually, if you, li- if you listen and read the lyrics to that song, man oh man. Yep. Hey, yeah, someone should lock that person up. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's stalker talk that we're talking about but that's the thing is like there's a lot of interesting things now there's one other thing about smash that i'm really mad about what and the the internet seems to be in collective agreement about this so everybody from mario parties and everything are in i knew it, it. Hell, i knew you were gonna even say daisy like this. even daisy Gets an alpha version of Daisy. So really, there's three characters that have already been announced. Splatoon, the Splatoon Inkling, Ridley, and Daisy. Now, she is one of those Omega or Alpha characters that really just share the same moves as somebody else, like Lucina and Marth. But my boy, Waluigi. My boy, my wah. My good old wah. Especially after watching Aces. Why is he still an assist trophy? They better, they better be tricking us right now because this poor guy is left out in the rain. This poor, poor man. You know that he he's just he just wanted wants to be a tennis player, man, and he's really good at it. Why can't why can't we have Waluigi? I'm actually, I know you're pissed about that, but I'm more pissed than fucking Bomberman's and his sister. Yeah. He but... should be a full fucking playable character. It's fucking Bomberman. Oh, Nami. <laughs> right. Konami. That's, that's the problem, is Konami. He'd also be a very item-based um, type of character. Yeah, that's so, true. So that, like, I could see the logistic nightmare. That Bomberman would be just a, like if you really think about him logistically as a player, I I can't really think of too many like a extra moves that he would have that didn't revolve around him having to put bombs and being strategic on how you lay them. Are, does he have trip mines? Like his whole shtick is not being hit by his own bombs. Mm-hmm. So if you're using bombs to elevate him and and all that type of stuff, really it. Just like just logistically, is reason why poor old Mama Man fits better as an assist trophy than he does yeah. as like a a character because he just doesn't have enough to him mm-hmm. uh, to really warrant that because they haven't really done anything new with Bomberman Man since the sixty four era when they actually gave him th- like a three D space to to walk around in and then ever since then it's been weird post-apocalyptic reboots and just classic regular Bomberman again. Like, even the one that came out on the Switch recently. Like, it's just a, it's just another Bomberman game that's like, you know, look at this grid, put bombs in the grids, and they blow up. Yeah, that's, that's true. It. So I, I, as much as, as much as I, I sort of share that because he is sort of very iconic in the gaming sphere, he just doesn't have enough to him that makes me say, 
yeah, he should be part of the roster mm. over so many other people and potential people that could be in the roster. It, the fact that he's showing up at all is still good because I thought all those Konami characters were going to be behind lock and key. Especially considering Sakurai Snake can work came magic. Back. What? Yeah. Yeah, especially like yeah, you said like with Snake coming back. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's crazy. So maybe maybe Simon Simon may end up uh coming back Simon. like or coming at being new like a new character Simon because Belmont. yeah. Yeah. Cuz Konami's has a toe in the water. Mm -hmm. but like you never know. I like I said, not gonna hold my breath too too much. The, that's the thing is, as cool as it is, I have a feeling we're only gonna get four people. But DLC is always a possibility, right? Yeah, that's true. You know, if if Cloudo can make it in, you know, just fucking Cloud. Uh, when's Goku? Yeah, when's <laughs> Goku? Right. Funimation's still waiting. Yeah. See the problem, and I I think I've mentioned this before. Is the problem with someone like Goku is yes, Dragon Ball Z has video games. But he didn't get his start in video games. I know, games. but and, like people are and still going to ask for And it. Smash feels exclusively to me as as like a series that has video game characters in it, not anime characters that have video games. That's the that's the only the only fight back that I'll I'll give about that. But that's it. Two and a half hours later. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was a long. <laughs> that's one. it. Yeah, but we wanted we wanted to get all this done in, in in one extra part because a it's been what how many weeks since we actually recorded the last Fuck. one and two uh its relevancy goes out the window when half the games that we're talking about are out already <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly but I still felt like there's still a lot of talk to talk about because there's still stuff that's not coming out for a while even until 2019 so um yeah. So yeah, so that's basically really all we've got to talk about at E3. I know we didn't cover everything like the PC gaming show, but there's too much goddamn shit. So yeah, yeah that would that would have been another hour mm -hmm. of us complaining on. And I didn't even watch that conference, so it's hard for me to feel anything <laughs> about it. Um, but hey, if you guys want to leave us uh, comments or questions, uh, you can tweet at us with hashtag HunterBasePodcast. We'll leave a comment down below in the YouTube comments or and on my Facebook page, Zero Master Fan page. Um, speaking of which, you can follow me on uh, Twitter at Zero Master. Zero Master Fan page is my Facebook page. I stream on Twitch every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 p.m. Eastern time uh, on my Twitch, Zero Master LP, and my YouTube channels as standard. Uh, where can they find you? Uh, pretty much. On any any of the the platforms, you just search Canadian Jutsu, and I am there. So right. Twitter dot com slash Canadian Jutsu, uh, Twitch TV slash Canadian Jutsu. Uh, on YouTube, I have an assortment of L's and I's in front of Canadian Jutsu. Mm -hmm. But if you just do a quick search, uh, my channels come up really. Yeah, you'll find it. Um, and yeah, obviously. We all these things are linked down in the description below. So if you are having issues finding them on your own, there is a wonderful description that only ten percent of people actually look at. <laughs> so you could be the eleven percent uh, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I put a lot of shit in the description, so hopefully, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, his descriptions are like novels. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. I'm far from the worst, though, which is good. Oh, I, I, um, know. I know. Before I mean, we, it's, it's good that it's good that it's down there because it's sometimes really easy to <laughs> to find a lot of the stuff that we're talking about and slash or us. But before we finish up, um, just some quick updates. I have finally completed recording the footage for Mega Man Eight, both versions. I clapped. He clapped. He clapped when we heard that. Um, I thought so when I heard that. I will. I am beginning the writing phase this weekend of my Mega Man Eight Zero's Maverick hunting. Review. So expect Ooh, that man. to happen soon. Um, I also have several quick hunts in in the wait once this is done, and other videos. But I'm putting all my focus on Mega Man Eight to get it done. Um, you're still your next review is done. You're just still waiting on. Uh, I'm just waiting on a commission. However. 
I, I have actually gotten in contact with the artist. Uh, she she's pretty she's pretty popular, so it's difficult for her to 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 make like a proper date for her type of stuff. And plus, she just upgraded her computer and her tablet and everything. So yeah. it, it's one of those things. So if she doesn't get me the commission by the end of the month, I'm just going to release it. OK, uh, I put in between that uh, just as a buffer on my on my uh, channel. I put the I re-uploaded the abridged uh, one shot that I did of Bleach. So that's sort of like a little two week buffer between that and the review. So if I don't get it by the end of July, I'm just going to release that and then I'll use it for uh, the upcoming reviews afterwards, yeah. which one of them I finally finished recording uh, and scripting. I just need to do the voiceover and uh, some of the live action stuff. Okay that I want to do and then I'll be working on that. So I have two reviews, but before I finish that review, ITAS 11 is my next big thing. Yep. I actually have done another minute of that. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. I actually put it's it's a it's slow going. I uh, I've always I've always had like a little apprehension when it comes to editing. For some reason, I love creating these things, but editing them is like the bane of my existence for some strange reason. So you know what's funny? It's like making the reviews, the editing is my favorite part, but doing the abridged stuff, I love the editing, but at the same time, I find it really tedious, so yeah. it's hard to like Yeah, the, the balance. Like, that's the thing about reviews, is the reviews are so much, they're more, more streamlined. Uh, you don't have to fucking worry about lip flaps, because if they are lip flaps, they are coming out of your actual mouth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In the exact order that you said them. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. But um, the only other thing I want to talk about is um, Maximum Football 2018 it comes out July 31st on PS4 and Xbox One. Um, it's going to be about it's going to be sixteen dollars American, so probably about twenty dollars Canadian. Um, so if you want to check it out when it comes out, check it out. I'm probably going to pick it up because. I don't know what it is, but that game is really fun. Like, also, oh, you just want to support some some local some local Canadian uh, developers. But man. but on top of it, it feels like a football game, which is something that's hard <laughs> that's to good. say about Madden <laughs> these days. But uh, but yeah, when was the last time you played a Madden? Game? Oh, fucking two thousand nine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the last one I played. But yeah, uh, so. If this is getting if this is getting zero master the zero master play a football game. I want to play a fucking sports after game. After almost 10 years of saying no more. Then you know that it's at least a, of a higher quality. And I mean I mean it, it's 20 bucks either way. So I mean it's not like it's going to be a huge amount of money. I'm not asking you to go buy the new Bubsy for 20 bucks. Yeah, just say that much. This will actually provide you more than an hour and a half worth of gameplay. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But uh, yeah. anyways, enough shilling. Um, this is was the Hunter Base podcast, and now for ten episodes, we are we are here. Oh, ha oh have we been? We we've, we've we've hit number ten. We've hit number ten. This is episode ten. Oh wow, we're in the double digits. In the oh, double my. digits now. We are we're a real podcast now. Actually, technically, I'm not a real podcast yet because I haven't been in all ten. Well, I mean, I mean, you're the most prevalent person on the podcast. That's true. I, I, I'm a, I'm about, I'm in six of them. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I have six, six or seven. And we are only, we are only. Let's see. Um, we are only. Um, <laughs> we are only four hundred and five episodes behind my brother, my brother, and me. <laughs> so we're on a great start <laughs> we're on a great start i am on chapter 10 of this amazing amazing super smash brothers oh my God. fan fiction okay can can we will i finish that before we ever finish talking about video games stay tuned can we just can we go over that real quick how this came to be uh you know what we'll save it we'll save it for another podcast where we talk about we talk about stories and our favorite video game stories or something like yeah that. we're almost you know what we're almost pushing three hours here so yeah so that's why i'm saying i think we could save that um just like you know things stories that i like to tell <laughs> you know how i like to tell stories in your let's play mm -hmm. and stuff 
Oh, I know how you like to tell stories. You were quoting one when you were talking to me this afternoon. We're gonna have to have a we're gonna have to have a story time podcast episode where you just go over this fucking fan fiction. (laughs) We're gonna need an hour and a half. Uh, We'll do we'll do we'll call it like Smash Brothers Watch. (laughs) Yeah, Subspace Emissary Watch. All right, and I'll keep you up to date with what's going on. You, You better. I mean, oh, I will. Better. Anyways, guys. Again, I'm Zero Master. I'm Canadian Jason. And thanks for watching the Hunter Race Podcast. We'll see you next time. Yeah. We got a mission to do. Is it uh is it Vulcan Raven this time? Fucking I don't know. It's uh, as long as it's not Tornado Tunyon. <laughs> Burn it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking what's his name? Fire Hyena oh. f- I don't know. Yeah, he's well that's what his Japanese name is, but yeah. he has a different one. Whatever. See you later. Ciao.